to be a grave and tower alone on the sea. You became the light on the dark side of me. Love remains a drug that's a high and not the pill. But you know when it snows, my eyes become large in the light that you shine can be seen. I can pay you to a kiss from the rose on the grave. Ooh! Hi everyone. How are you? Welcome to a cringe stream. I hope you're doing well. I was gonna do Chud Watch today, and then I realized I don't want to deal with the dumb shit that's going on today. It's not like one thing in particular. Just eh. I picked some videos. Ben Shapiro being transphobic about. Sports Illustrated having a trans model on the swimsuit issue cover, and I was just like, you know what, no, I want to laugh at some silly stuff today. So we're going to do this, and then Saturday we'll do a chud watch, okay? <laughs> uh, where do you throw cleanse videos? Just in the chat's fine. Um, uh, Adria Staley, thank you for subscribing for eight months as almost a sub, baby. One month to go. Some links. Le centre perdu le cœur Ma la faible santé pas pour pas Non, exemple de la pour pas Why are they singing about a motorcycle? I don't speak this language Ma la faible santé pas pour pas Non, exemple de la pour pas a superman of the hero singer style I like the night to swing a kite But it's a mic, help me I don't move Ja, voor dat leuke talentje ben ik echt het juiste ventje. Oh, Ramana, wat sta jij maar op de toer? Toer, 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 toer. Met Ramana op de scooter. Eie, 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 eie. Heel stukje. No, this one isn't the cleanse. This is the cleanse. This might be copyrighted. It is. I can't play this. Yeah, so let's just jump right into it, I guess. I, I don't have a lot to say. Um, <laughs> let's just get into the cringe. Right-wing broadcaster Stu Peters again says Dr. Fauci should be executed. Oh, no. <clears throat> Zero M80 with 100 bits says, hello, so Hanny, looking the submissive and breedable today. Wow. Okay, that's a lot. Thank you. <laughs> latest craze beyond everybody getting vaccinated is the American uh, uh, Academy of Pediatrics who are, they've just come out with a statement saying that, sorry, CDC, sorry, everybody else, but if you are two years and up, if you're a child of two years and up, you still are gonna have to wear a mask, no matter if you've been vaccinated or not uh, for the foreseeable future. No matter so if you've been poisoned or not by the intent. Yeah. No, the vaccine is not poison, it is medicine. Please go get vaccinated. Intentionally engineered bioweapon that is meant to kill, maim, and destroy. How is it even legal for him to say this shit? <laughs> like, I'm all for, like, free speech and stuff, but, like... At what point does it breach yelling fire in a crowded theater, you know what I mean? At what point does it become a public danger to spread this kind of lie about medical stuff? Tucker White says, well, I quit. That cringe at the start was too much. <laughs> There's a link. <laughs> Toaster in the bathtub from Groundhog's Day, which I can't play. Because it's copyrighted. <laughs> uh, hype train, we're at level one. Let's just exactly. clarify, this is not a vaccine. Right, yeah, it's not a vaccine. It's a, it's a vaccine. It is, in fact, a vaccine. Get the vaccine. I got it. I got both doses of, I believe, the Moderna vaccine. I feel fine. It's good. Go get it. The poison shot. Yes, unequivocally, 100%, uh, this is the clot shot. 
Right, exactly. And so they're saying, hey, go back to school if you want to go back to school. But your child, if they're two and up, is going to be having to wear a mask regardless of vaccination status mm -hmm. if they're vaccinated. So A, this proves that the vaccine literally doesn't matter. The it doesn't matter shot. anyways whether yeah. you've gotten or not. And we all knew this was coming. Um, there's literally no perks, no benefits to getting the vaccine or not. Yes, there is. If you catch, if you come in contact with COVID, it will protect you from it so you don't wind up in the hospital or dead or with long-term respiratory issues. Please get the vaccine. Not um, for most people and most children. And B, that, that they're complicit in this abuse and it's never gonna get any better. You give them an inch, they take five miles. But we know that if we would see someone with abused children, um, and they let abuse happen over and over again, knowing it was happening, we would say, you are a stupid parent, right? You are stupid. You're Why are you letting this happen? Yeah. But at some point, if it continues, wouldn't you think, okay, you're not just stupid, you're complicit. You are complicit in this abuse because now you know it's happening That's right. and you're allowing it to happen. Yeah. So at what point, and I think that- What do you think the chances are that these two are actually both vaccinated and this is 100% a grift for them? Like, I'm just wondering, because I know there are some people out there who are definitely pushing the whole, like, anti-vax bullshit line, but are vaccinated. Certain people at Fox News, for instance. So I'm wondering if these two are vaccinated and are just, we gotta scare people so they give us money. Time is now, Stu. Do we say, you parents that are allowing your children to be strapped up with a, a sexual fetish, with a, with a very abusive tool of submission, You think she's saying masks like 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 COVID masks, masks that doctors have been wearing as PPE for a century. She's saying this is a fetish. What the fuck? Why are you sexualizing a piece of PPE, you sick fuck? Mike Mack says, but Hannah, the government's job is not to help its people. Oh, of course not. My bad. I forgot. The government's job is to protect uh, the capital class and um, <laughs> uh, uh, put down any... Um, oh, what was I going to say? Shit. I'm blanking today, guys. Sorry. Uh, get deformed. Thanks for 11 months of subscriptions. Kirthin with 100 bits says, living without lung scarring is my fetish. It's a good one. You are complicit in this, unless you go around and march and protest until this mask mandate is lifted. 83% uh, to level one of the hype train. And until any vaccine mask mandate is lifted, you are complicit in the abuse of children. These parents I'm will be held to no different standards than the elected representatives or candidates that I'm talking about. If you're not actually exactly. doing something to fight I'm this, if you're just bitching and moaning and complaining, which is... You're just bitching and moaning and complaining. ...what these elected representatives are doing. Again, I see yeah. another headline today. Uh, Rand Paul really grills Fauci. I don't really care. I don't uh, care either, Yeah, too. click on the link uh, from Rand Paul's social media page. It'll take you to his grifting fundraising website. That's what he's trying to do. Right. He's trying to make money. If you really want to grill the guy, how about this? How about demand a, a criminal investigation, indict this guy? On <laughs> indict him for what? Doing his fucking job? Bumble Homestead, thanks for gifting a sub. The Republicans have such a boner for, for indicting and killing their political enemies these days. <sighs> charges of crimes against humanity and send him to the gallows. Uh, yeah. That's what you should do. And as far right. as these parents, the same thing. I don't care about your Facebook post or your tweet or your gab or any of this nonsense BS. Uh, actually go do something. And furthermore, what they're trying to do to the sane parents like me, you, well, you're not a parent, but what they're trying to do to people like me. Did I see the tweet you sent? Vegan teacher did the N word again. Oh God, did she? No, I didn't see that more what they're trying to do to the sane parents like me you well you're not a parent but what they're trying to do to people like me sane parents who understand and realize what this really is is they're trying to push you to go inject graphene oxide into your kid a toxic substance a poison because you don't want your kid masked so you either suffocate them or you know subject them to this weird sexual fetish this this uh, bondage type display of subservience really what it is yeah or you go ahead and go poison the hell out of them and uh, right. just just maim them or permanently disable them or kill them I try not to wish harm on people and this is twitch so I can't do that I'll leave it there
Morok says, I don't know if you heard, but I introduced uh, Ordinary Sausage to another lefty streamer last night and completely derailed the stream. Not sure if I should be ashamed or proud. You should be proud. For sure. There's only one thing I want. And you know what that is. Fucking yikes. unusual group for you tonight they certainly are a little bit dancers oh is it mono and special guest hazel O'Connor. yeah left and ear only tonight and will be in a, will be in a fortnight's time i'll tell you about that in a moment uh, they're performing obviously the left is governing through fetish categories it's what we're best at 17 percent to level two with two minutes left in the hype train tonight for the Rape Crisis Center. They're trying to raise funds for the Rape Crisis Center, which is the most worthy cause. The song is called What Did I Do Wrong? So let's have a big welcome, please, for Rap Against Rape. <laughs> Losing their heart and soul. The 1980s have come and gone, but this problem still goes on and on. It's time for us to join together. We gotta stamp out the surf forever. We don't wanna hear the child cry. See a woman left with pain in her eyes. You know, when I've thought about the problem of sexual assault and how to solve it and how to like reduce sexual assaults, never once did my mind go, a rap! We'll get a sweet rap together, and then the next time someone's about to date rape someone, they'll go, Nah, man, I was gonna, but then I heard that rap, and I was like, I shouldn't rape. Don't rape. <laughs> Rap against rape is something we can do to try and get this message across to me and you. Yes, rap against rape, we can show what's there. We can show the innocence that we really care. <laughs> Young babies, infants, toddlers, yes, even a simple child, can all end up abused, can all end up defiled. You know, age it makes... This is the first rap I've ever heard that included a line about baby rape. There's no difference, it offers no defense. To women in the ratings, it just don't make no sense. Who could believe it? Who could understand? This is happening in our homes. It's happening in our land. In your hour of need, in your moment of pain, in the stillness of the night, you can start to go insane. But the biggest problem is the terrible guilt you feel. But you know, you don't deserve it. It becomes so real. And you torture yourself with, what did I do wrong? Knowing in your heart that it was nothing all along. Okay, that's that's. I, I think I think we 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 about get that. <laughs> I don't think we need to watch to the end. The reason you lift your hand is because you already believe. You're saying I believe, you know, and I we just given you an opportunity to confess him before men. He sees you, a little guy in the back. Little guy. I'm not a midget. He's a he's a child. I mean, I don't want anyone to think I was offending a midget. <sighs> oh no. There's a whole YouTube channel, Bad Preachers? Yes, please. Subscribe. Um, Karosh72, thanks for 100 bits. 
Oh no, Steven Anderson. Yeah, this guy's terrible. Steven J. Neptune Man says there's a lot of cringe rap in the 80s and early 90s because once the Beastie Boys hit big, a bunch of white people went, wait, we can do that? That looks easy. Nope. <laughs> in fairness, they did have to fight for their right to party, okay? You can't take that right away. The Beastie Boys died for that right. Rip. You know, this week, this, this filthy sodomite picture is everywhere and people are showing this transvestite or transgender or whatever this guy is. You know what I'm talking about? This, this athlete or whoever he is. I don't know who it is. I'd never even heard of him before this week. Bruce Jenner has basically mutilated his body, apparently. And, and, and... I wish I could mutilate my body with as much money as Caitlyn Jenner paid for that shit. Good for her. I hate her. She's a terrible person. But if that's uh, mutilating, I'll have some of that, please. Mike Mack says, man, conservatives are um, dying to see God so badly these, these days. Good for them. And Derp42069, thanks for seven months, says, hey, Hannah, been a wild time. I hate to ask this, but do you remember the name of the screechy lady MAGA singer who covers pox, pop songs you play from time to time? I want to show my friends, but can't find it again. Uh, Danzy Sings. Danzy Sings. One Speedy Yoshi says, I was scrolling the comments on one of your latest videos, and this one, you just gotta read it. I mean, what I don't normally read comments. I... You didn't link to the specific comments. Oh, this one? I like you, Hannah, but you're not a leftist, you're a liberal. I can't really agree with that one. <laughs> I'm not gonna say I'm the most radical lefty in the world. There are certainly people on Twitch who are much further left than me. But I wouldn't consider myself a liberal. I'm in favor of workplace democracy and all that shit. Like, just because I'm okay with the idea of markets existing does not necessarily mean I'm uh, uh, a liberal. They're a tanky. Ah, oh, that makes sense. They did have a picture of Stalin as their AVI, so I guess I should have <laughs> clued into that. You know what? He's being praised by our president. Our President Obama is praising him for, or, or praising her. We don't even know what it is. No, we know. Caitlyn Jenner's a her. I think that he used the female pronoun about somebody named Bruce. And so Caitlyn? Morak says, wait, y'all folks are the ones who mutilate babies' genitals, yet we're the monsters for willingly going through surgery? Check my DMs, sorry. Dead. You know, oh, oh, such courage. You're so wonderful. Oh, you know, our, our president is praising the wicked here, okay? Mm-hmm. One sec, I gotta send something to Baja for a house application thing. It'll just take a sec. I already have the statements downloaded. I just have to shoot an email real quick. Gmail, it's a lot like email, but it gets read by Google, and they offer me advertisements based on the things that I email about. <sighs> okay, Baja, I am sending you those uh, on your dot edu email Baja sliding into my DMs that's how we met someone had a tweet the other day that was like uh, Twitter is not a dating site no but it's like a social media site <laughs> people do meet each other on there sometimes and and there's just all the and I mean this this Filthy pervert is just like on all these magazine covers and just... That filthy pervert, I think, has been married to the same person for decades. Uh, Vast Lunacy says, I hate when right-wingers correctly gender people, but then force themselves to misgender for clout. It's such a convoluted way to be. I know. Um, I think Ben, ben Shapiro has done that before, too. He's correctly gendered someone accidentally, and then he corrects himself, air quote, to misgender them. You thought you we meant on farmersonly.com? Unfortunately, no. Only recently have we become farmers through our adventures in Stardew Valley. Everywhere, just being crammed on our throat. To literally, like hundreds of millions of people 
literally hundreds of millions of people are being subjected to looking at a tra trans freak. Again, I hate Caitlyn Jenner. I think she's a terrible, terrible person. But, like, she just looks like a person. There's nothing wrong with the way she looks. She's evil. But she's not a fucking troll. <laughs> and this person is just the, the evangelist of sodomy and filth to the world. And you know what? And people are, and then- I don't think she has to engage in sodomy. I'm pretty sure she had the bottom surgery. <laughs> Not that it matters, but. And then people are like, oh, we need to pray for him that he finds Jesus. I'm gonna pray that he dies and goes to hell. Right, are you serious? That's a very Jesus-like thing to say. Look. Yeah, I've seen the Ben Shapiro try. thing. <laughs> You have to bifurcate it. Did she those years invested as as this can do? I five. Yes. Where was that? Hold on, I got to find a specific part. The fracked eyes. Genetics. I, I, so I'd stay away from the genetics and back to the brain scans. You cut that out now, or you'll go home in an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> Mildly inappropriate for a political discussion. No, I know. Well, yeah. but wait. To be fair, but to you, be, but to be fair, wait. But to be fair, violence, that's you but, are, but to be fair, you're being, actually being hey guys, rude. You're and that, no, no, and, and no, that's no, no. not fair. I'm sorry. <laughs> ben fucking Shapiro. I have nothing but hate when I see a man dressed up as a woman who has mutilated his body to become a woman and saying, "Hey, look at me, everybody! Look at me, kids!" I mean, the kids in America today. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old are seeing this freak. Yeah, and many of those kids are trans, and they're going to grow up knowing, hey, Caitlyn Jenner might be a piece of shit. Hopefully they'll know that. But, at the very least, I can come out and be trans if I want. That's cool. And having their minds perverted and ruined permanently... I hope, I listen to me, I hate him with a perfect hatred. Amen. I have no love, no love for this Bruce freak. I hope he dies today. I hope he dies and goes to hell. He's disgusting, he's filthy, he's reprobate. And I would pray all these prayers from Psalm 69 and so, oh, how could you say that? Well, how did God say it? I would pray all this in Psalm 69 and Psalm 109 toward him. Oh, Christianity was a mistake. Uh, one Speedy Yoshi says, it always reminds me of Jeremy says, I'm not against trans people, but whenever someone comes out as trans, he's like, you're not really trans, and then makes fun of the it's ma'am woman who just does, uh, doesn't pass well enough for him. Yeah. Uh, Moira Soma says, Caitlyn Jenner, who has only been attracted to women her whole life, tried to date, uh, men after transition because that's what women do. That's how clueless she is. <laughs> I didn't know that. I did not know that. A man named JL went, to, uh, went into the cheese business in Chicago. He failed and went bankrupt. Send it to the non-EDU email? Okay, sorry. One sec, let me resend that. I wonder why it didn't send. That's very strange. Weird. It says it's sent, but I'll send one to your other one. You got it? Okay. Bro. Hey, sir. What you talking over here? Hey! What you talking? I'm talking to you, sir. Thank you. God bless you. I'm preaching. You went into the cheese business. He failed. He went bankrupt. 
TikToks while you preach. You <laughs> what a fucking psycho. <sighs> Oh no, is this Biden saying something stupid? How do you change the mistrust in the system among some members of the black you, community? You, you got the vaccination? Yeah. Are, are, you, are you okay? I mean, you seem, no, it works. Or, you, you know, or, 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 or the mom and dad, or, 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 or the neighbor, or when you go to church, or when you're, no, I, I, I really mean it. There are trusted interlocutors. Think of the people, if, if your kid wanted to find out whether or not there were, there's a man on the moon or whatever, you know, something, or, you know, whether those aliens are here or not. You know, who are the people they talk to beyond the kids who love talking about it? I know the point he's trying to make there about, like, where do you get your information fact-checked from, but boy, does he not know how to succinctly say a fucking point. Jesus Christ, Biden. Can we stop with the geriocracy? I'm not a fan. Um, Quill of Numenor, thanks for subscribing with Prime. Appreciate it. Sushi Mom is holding a GoFundMe. Yeah, go ahead and link it. Morak says, word salad on the bingo card. Stephen J. Neptune Man says, it's thanks to this stream that I can't see Joe Biden without thinking of him smacking children. Listen up, Jack. Sometimes you just gotta hit a kid, you know? That's a joke. Don't hit kids. Don't hit anyone. Oh, no, this guy lied about surviving 9-11. Mm -hmm. um, so Steve got into controversy when it came out. Did you did you out yourself or did uh, somebody bust you? The Times. The New York Times, yeah. yeah. New York Times figured this mm -hmm. out. Did you figure out how they figured out that you were lying about your experience during 9-11? Did you ever figure out how no, they busted no, you? No, I don't. I, I, I don't know how they figured it out. I mean, there, there's videos out there, obviously. That's the, the, the sources they cited, but... To be honest with you, it was just, it was a complete out of the blue situation. I got a phone call on a Monday. It had to be either a friend or a family member knew you were making this story up about being in the Twin Towers when they came down. Mm -hmm. because it's the only way a guy would even bother investigating this, don't you think? Perhaps. I don't know. I mean, I, I it's been, you know, 14 years, obviously, and, and so... You know, time is, as the stories come out a little bit, you know, there were, there were waves of the story. In the beginning, it was sort of something that I, I, I said, you know, and then, and then I did some podcasts a couple of years later. But then, since then, no one's ever talked about it. Like you said, I was on the show, The League, for, for the last six years, and no one ever asked me in an interview about it. No one ever asked, you know. Sweetie Ochi says, lying about 9-11, straight to hell, to the boiler room of hell, all the way down. There's a good documentary about something similar called The Woman Who Wasn't There about a woman who did something similar, but also got involved in, like, 9-11 survivor groups and, like, uh, 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 advocacy groups and, like, fundraising and stuff, and it turned out she was lying about the whole thing. She wasn't even in New York on 9-11. It was crazy. I'd highly recommend that documentary. Have a duty to stand up for what is right and continue to fight for freedom. Ew. Uh, 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 no, 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 no. Democrats decided to shield and shelter criminal. Look, look, wait. You have criminals. <laughs> All right, uh, we're watching the president here. <laughs> you saw the Joe Biden for president campaign smear your son as a white supremacist. What was your reaction? How dare um, him do that to my son? That's my son. This is Kyle Rittenhouse's mother. What do I think of the Free Britney thing? I think the conservatorship she's under is really fucked up. I don't think she should be under it. He, that he did that too. And I'm yeah. not going to back down from him. And he is not a white supremacist. He's not a racist. He's my son. And I know him. 
and he is none of that what Joe Biden said. So there's no, as far as I know, and we looked today, but I don't think there's any evidence at all that that's true. I don't think there's... I think the fact that he went to Kenosha and shot people probably is pretty good evidence. Lily Love Stuff says, people who lie like that deeply fascinate me. Me too. Speedy Yoshi says, maybe don't raise a murderer, Mrs. Rittenhouse. Hope he rots in prison. He won't know he's white. Unfortunately, you may be tr right about that one. Oh, yeah, I remember when Trump called Tim Cook Tim Apple. Tim Apple. Uh, <laughs> we appreciate it very much, Tim Apple. Uh, Maria Pete, thanks for gifting a sub. The vegan teacher video. <laughs> oh yeah, I can't play this. This is just a clip of Men in Black. Um, I'm assuming, does the vegan teacher say the N word, or does she? Because I want to play this video, but if she outright says the N word, I can't play it. She spells it out with other words. Okay. Ethan Trace is a disgrace. Have a look at that face. That is the face of somebody who thinks it's okay to pay for the rape, torture, enslavement, kidnapping, and murder of innocent animals who never did one single thing wrong to him ever. Now, most people, when they find out about the meat, dairy, and egg industries, they change. That's definitely not true, statistically. Most people aren't vegan, but I also think most adults are at least vaguely aware of the conditions under which um, chattel are treated while they're being processed at, you know, meat plants or dairy stuff. I think people at this point are at least roughly aware that the conditions aren't great. So the idea that most people who learn about this become vegan, just not true. Vast Lunacy says, vegan teacher got bars. I don't know, she rapped the other day, so I don't know if I agree with that. They say, oh my goodness, I had no idea what was going on. I need to start eating more veggies and fruits. I need to stop eating animals. I need to stop contributing to their suffering. I need to be kind to everyone, but not Ethan Trace. If you pay the murderer to commit the crime, you are just as responsible as the person who took that life. Ethan Trace, you're a disgrace. It's not normal, Ethan Trace, to hear about me teaching to a college student that he should eat more veggies and fruits and for you to immediately start thinking about his genitalia. What? That's weird. It's not normal, Ethan Trace, to when you find out what happens to the chickens and the pigs and the cows to keep eating them. Ethan Trace, you're a disgrace. In the dairy industry, the males, the bulls, are touched and forced to give their sperm. They are masturbated. That's rape. The sperm is then inserted into the females against their will. Uh, Mike Max says, so how many insects are dead because of you, vegan teacher? And Pyromancer says, some kindergarten level insults. That's sexual assault. I'm going to be real. I think the bulls probably enjoy being masturbated. 
Like, that's probably a weird... <laughs> I think that's probably a weird thing to say. But, like, they're animals. They don't really... Particularly the, the fact that they're, they're, they're bulls. I don't think they're the most intelligent animal. They're mammals, so they're up there. But you know what I mean? Amongst mammals, like... I think they just are like, oh, someone's touching... The, I'm not going to get into this. You get what I'm saying, right? I don't think the bulls are against what is happening when they're collecting the semen. It also happens to the mother pigs against their will. Yeah, I know. I'm not trying to... <laughs> Let's just forget that conversation even happened. That's bestiality. When the baby pigs are born, they cannot even see their mothers. Probably makes it easier to take them away from them then. Because their mother is kept in such a tight, confined space that she can't even turn around. It is about the size of your bathtub. It's hard to fathom that we as humans can do this. All right, I'm making jokes, but seriously, I'm against factory farming. I think it's shitty, at least the conditions under which exist now, yes. The animals get treated like absolute garbage, and it's terrible. I agree. And most of us, when we find out about it, we want to stop it. We know it's wrong. Ethan Trace, you're a disgrace for continuing to promote this. Most people, when they find out what happens to the females, stop drinking milk because they know it's wrong to enslave them. It's wrong to kidnap the baby boys and turn them into veal sandwiches. It's wrong to pin down any mother and remove her child and force her to give her milk. That's stealing. Stealing is wrong, Ethan Trace. You are a disgrace for encouraging that to continue. I am against racism. It's wrong to treat people who have a different skin color or are different in any way. Skip the dictionary pronunciations. Yeah, I will. Uh, Daddy Sume says, who makes a veal sandwich? That's a waste of veal. Differently. Don't treat them badly. The thing she writes on the paper, though, I think I can show because it's not, it's, it's not technically spelled out really but it is but it's not they did nothing wrong they are born as beautiful as anyone else when i found out about the suffering that they felt hearing the n-word i suggested that it would be possible to reclaim that word vegan teacher that word has in many ways been reclaimed already by the black community. It is not your job as a fucking wealthy old white lady from Canada to try and take it upon yourself to reclaim the N-word. What is wrong with you, you entitled POS? What is wrong with you? and to use it differently. I said, maybe it can start to mean naturally intelligent, gorgeous, generous, exemplary, radiant. Isn't that what you see when you look at her? That's what I see. Ethan Trace thinks that anyone who says the N-word is automatically racist. If you're a white person, there's a pretty good chance. It's like a it's like a 99.999% depending on the context. Regardless of the context, according to him. Can't show this part. Going to skip over that. Trace. Ethan Trace. You know I'm not racist. How dare you spread that lie? 
I don't think the vegan teacher is maliciously racist, but she is ignorantly racist. Why not look in the mirror at your own behavior? Oh yeah, we got a bunch of new emotes for those who didn't see. Um, so a lot of them are like tier 2, tier 3. So, check them out if you'd like to use any of these. At the millions of animals that you have encouraged to die because of what you said on social media, making fun of animal rights activists with your vegan phobia. Stop being vegan phobic. Love animals, eat plants. Be an animal defender. End homophobia. End vegan phobia. End racism. End speciesism. Be kind to all kinds. Stop paying for the rape, torture, enslavement, kidnapping, and murder of innocent animals who never did one single thing wrong to you. In the egg industry, the baby boy chicks are ground up at birth if they are boys because they will never be able to lay eggs. They are considered to be a waste product. Imagine holding a baby boy chick in your hands. Ethan Trace, imagine holding a little baby boy chick in your hands. Imagine then- Does she understand that this is like super weird? Like a lot of her videos are like this in the sense that like, Making it like a weird shrine with this guy with her tablet and a photo and using all these dolls and like... Does she know this is super weird? Like, does she know this comes off as just really, really, really bizarre? <laughs> and it just makes her look like a crazy person? Yes, Joe Aconite made the emotes, so thank you again, Joe, for those. So I was going by and I saw this sign. Need help? Yeah. I thought to myself, the animals really need help. So there's this number that you can call. So of course I called and I said, listen, you have this sign that says that if we need help, we can call you. And I said, I need a delivery. And they said, okay, what would you like? And I said, well, there are factory farms right now filled with billions of innocent animals who don't want to die. SC Sigs, thanks for subscribing for four months, says, here you go, Hannah, thank you. Tucker White with 100 bits says, that's terrible, grabs bag, I mean, opens bag. Who would continue to eat chicken after learning that? Eats Bojangles chicken biscuit. What is Bojangles chicken biscuit? <laughs> what is that? Is Bojangles a restaurant? And they need a locksmith to open the locks and they need an army to barrel the places down and set these animals free. They are in- You're surprised she isn't on that happen more frequently? Captivity. They are being enslaved. They are being raped, tortured, and murdered right now. Can you help? And they said, um, one moment, please. I'll get the minister. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll wait. So I waited a while on hold with, you know, the church music. And then the minister came on the phone and I explained, you know, apparently this is a church. I mean, there's a cross there, you know, so this must be a good place. Bojangles is a Southern delicacy. Let me look this up. Bojangles. I've literally never heard of this restaurant. Looks okay. Where's their menu? I want to see their menu. Where the heck is their menu? Here we go. Biscuit meals. I do like a good biscuit. All day breakfast. That's a good call. Looks like I got some hash browns. Boneless chicken favorites. I do like boneless chicken because I am a child. <sighs> yeah. Probably good. And I said, you have this sign out. Mike Max says, uh, so she in her own world and thinking that she's right to the point that she can't even think she's wrong. I know. 
Princess Amelia says that vegan teacher, quote, I said all this crazy shit and they were like, um, I'm gonna get my manager. So then I got put on hold for a while. Hydrate. Out front, it says that you help people. And who needs the help the most right now are the innocent chickens, cows, pigs, lambs, turkeys, all being murdered for no reason, raped. The disconnect here is, it's like she assumes every human being already considers like pigs and cows and chickens to be morally equivalent to human beings. And most people don't think that. Most people do not think that. So you have to, she needs to back up from this position and first convince people why people should care about animals in the way she is expecting them to. That needs to be explained to people if you want them to care. Pinned down, forced to be pregnant against their will. We need to rescue them. Can you help us? And the minister said... The minister said, I... I don't know what to tell you. And I said, well, do you understand what's going on? Have you... She doesn't think this is weird as part of the problem. She doesn't understand that animals don't have free will. She has to have read Animal Farm, Charlotte's Web, and other books where animals talk and are intelligent and think they're real. Daddy Sume says, The Bible literally gives man dominion over animals. Animals have no souls. The church will not care. Yeah. The church definitely doesn't give a shit. <laughs> you seen any of the documentaries yet? And they said, the guy said on the phone, uh, Well, I don't know really what you mean. And I said, Well, you know... Earthlings, Cowspiracy, Dominion Movement, What the Health, The Game Changers, Forks Over Knives, Seaspiracy, have you watched any of these? And the guy said, uh, no, I kind of sort of mostly read the Bible. And I said, well, you need a better education because if Jesus was alive right now, Jesus would want you to protect the animals. Um, Jesus was not a vegan. Like, definitively, we know Jesus was not a vegan. He ate fish. I'm sure he ate other meat as well. Jesus was not a vegan. He killed a shit ton of pigs. There's an entire story where he, there's a bunch of demon-possessed pigs. And he runs a whole herd of pigs off of a cliff and kills them. <laughs> Jesus is not a vegan. You know, this sign should be for everyone not just for humans. Mike Max says, Lady, you're talking to the wrong religion. We Christians eat the flesh of our Lord. And Pyromancer says, Heads up, God flooded the world and killed most of everything. <laughs> RTK says, 30 to 50 feral hogs. Yeah, too bad Jesus didn't have an AK-47, huh? So, he said, Well, I guess I could watch them. And I said, Great! I said, Listen, if you don't have that much time, at least just watch one of them. Don't watch .org. It's only six minutes long. I said, can you do that? He said, yeah, I'm so curious. You know what? I could do that. I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to do it. Obviously not on screen because I can't show that on screen most likely. Don't watch .org. Animal agri- Let's, let's, I'll watch it and I'll relay to you what is happening, okay? Uh, Vast Lunacy says, not only did Jesus and friends eat meat, but his dad had people just burn cows for no other reason than to glorify himself. That's true. Wait, she made the Dominion documentary? <laughs> of course she did. Agriculture is a multi-billion dollar industry controlled by some of the world's most powerful people and is an industry rooted in... What, do I think she'd hunt to survive or would she sacrifice herself to the animals? She'd probably just try and eat berries and stuff. Lies, secrecy, and animal abuse. Okay, schools, it's, it's stock footage of people government. drinking milk and businessmen, like, shaking hands. Doctors. There's a doctor. It's B-roll. It's all B-roll so far. Here is what they don't want you to see. In the dairy industry, cows need to be pregnant in order to produce milk. In order to collect the bull sperm to impregnate- Oh, wow! I didn't know what bull penises looked like when they're fully unsheathed. I don't like that. <laughs> the furry porn lied to me! <laughs> no, seriously though, this is a disgusting looking penis. Impregnate the female cow. The farmer masturbates the cow's penis. Once God! the sperm has been collected. 
That is the slimiest fucking thing I've ever seen. I don't like it. The female cow is restrained whilst the farmer inserts their arm into the I've seen stuff like this before. The cervix in place. Then a metal rod is used to insert the sperm into the cow's vagina. When the mother gives birth, her baby is taken from her so that the milk intended for her calf can be sold to humans. If her baby is male, he is considered a waste product in the dairy industry and is usually killed within a week. If the cow's baby is female, she will also- They just showed, um, them killing some of the baby cows, the floor is covered in blood. Um, is Hannah reacting to this animal sex video as a new feature on the show? <laughs> no, no it's not. They become a dairy cow and will go through the same process as her mother year after year. They're milking, they're putting the cows in, cows you know, in no the milk thing. milk, they are sent to the slaughterhouse to be killed. They're cutting the Only throat of a, a pig eggs, or a which means that cow. When male and female chicks hatch. The male chicks are left on the conveyor belt and are killed immediately. By yeah, that shows the chicks going into the slurry this is machine. Because they are considered a waste product in the egg industry. The process is the same for all eggs, including free range, organic. Speedy Yoshi says a fist is shoved up the vagina and a metal rod is inserted. I'll have what she's having. H. Baird, oh, no, Fred, that one. CCA approved eggs. Uh, they definitely don't just squirt the sperm into the vagina. That would be a waste. The metal rod is 100% to go through the cervix into the uterus. I think that's what they said. Isn't it? I thought they said they put it in the cervix because they talked about the farmer, um, like, uses their hand and inserts it in the anus to, like, do something to the cervix. And then they put the pole through into the cervix. Did they not? Okay. RTK says, killing the boys just seems useless. Aren't they still meat? Um, they're meat, but, like, in order to raise the male, how do I put this? You can either raise all chickens, like female chickens, which is redundant, and get things that can both produce more eggs and meat at the end of their useful egg-laying life cycle, or you can produce the roosters which can only do one of those things. And you're going to be putting money into them either way because you're going to have to feed them and house them, etc., etc. And yes, roosters are aggressive, so I think it just comes from a practicality standpoint. The female baby chicks are taken off the conveyor belt where the tips of their beaks are burnt off without pain relief. The female chicks are then transported to farms where they are forced to lay hundreds of eggs in crowded and unsanitary conditions. After a year and a half, the chicken... Yeah, it's a capitalism issue. Factory farming is awful. ...are carelessly thrown into crates and loaded onto trucks destined for the slaughterhouse. The chickens are already severely traumatized from careless handling and crowded conditions. This journey will be the first and last time that they see the light of day. At the slaughterhouse, the chickens are hung upside down and lowered headfirst into a tank of electrified water in order to stun them. Shortly after, their throats will be cut by an automated blade. If chickens move their heads when they are approaching the blade, they may end up drowning in the scalding water further down the process. It says meat, with air quotes around it. Mike Max with 30 bits and a link. A rooster for kids to breathe. Okay, we can watch that later. Um, it's them killing turkeys, killing chickens, is it saying when they kill them, seven weeks old for ducks, four to twelve months for sheep and lamb, goats, twelve to twenty weeks, pigs, five In to six months. Industry, the same process begins with the farmer collecting the male pig's sperm by masturbating the boar's penis. Oh, that, oh, that's a weird penis too. The farmer then inserts the sperm into the female pig's vagina in order to impregnate her. Once the mother pig gives birth, she is confined to a metal device called a farrowing crate, where she is unable to move or turn around to see her babies. All of her piglets will have their teeth clipped and their tails cut off with no pain relief. Unhealthy piglets are deemed a waste product and are slammed against a concrete wall or floor by farmers. This is standard practice in the pork industry. When the pigs are only six months old, they are sent to the slaughterhouse to be killed. 
In the pork industry, pigs are lowered into a CO2 gas chamber. Where Daddy Sume says, no, human penises are weird. Stop shaming the animals, Hannah. They have feelings. <laughs> Speedy OG says, that's a weird penis. You said you wouldn't tell anyone about me, Hannah. Suffocate and burn from the inside out. Finally, they will then be hung upside down and have their throats slit. In the fishing industry, fish are thrown into ice cold water where they can take up to Interesting that they didn't. Why didn't. The fish thing is gonna be way less effective than the mammals, so I stick the fish here. 30 minutes to suffocate to death. Even though their screams are silent, it has been scientifically proven that fish can feel pain. Of course. These practices happen to animals. Why wouldn't all over fish be able to feel pain? Do people are there idiots out there who legit think fish don't feel pain? What the fuck? Over the world. Australia. USA. United Kingdom. Canada. Thailand. Cambodia. Spain. France. Mexico. See, the last one wasn't bad at all. Again, this documentary, um, as how far into this are we four minutes 50 seconds into like a six minute video this doesn't make me not want to eat meat it makes me want to reform or abolish factory farming i agree the conditions under which these animals are living is disgusting and i don't think they deserve that but it doesn't make me think it's immoral to eat meat it makes me think the systems under which we currently produce meat is wrong and that we probably need to reduce our consumption and switch to more moral systems of treating these animals. Now it's just it's just like a montage of various countries and their stuff. B-roll of people eating cheeseburgers. Wearing animals. And using <laughs> it's a cringy Matrix leather jacket. Animals for experiments and entertainment. Scientific studies have shown that eating meat, dairy, and eggs could cause a variety of diseases, including heart disease, diabetes, and even cancer. Overeating those things can, yes. More than 800 scientific studies worldwide have proven that processed meats such as bacon, hot dogs, and deli meats are a class 1 carcinogen, meaning that they cause cancer in humans. Even though these products are known to be harmful to our health, they are readily available to children in schools and sick patients in hospitals. A plant-based diet can provide all of the essential vitamins and nutrients, including protein, iron, and calcium. and has even been proven to reverse certain diseases and cancers. Animal agriculture- One Speedy Yoshi says this reminds me of the episode of The Simpsons where Lisa stops eating bugs, um, thinking that it's still vegetarian, but then she realizes bugs have functioning hearts and stuff and probably feel pain and so quickly stops. I didn't even know that was a thing. Culture is not only responsible for inflicting unimaginable suffering on animals. It is the leading cause of species extinction, ocean dead zones, water pollution, and habitat destruction. It's time we change the way we view animals, to see them as individuals who are here with us, not for us. From this moment on, you can no longer say that you didn't know. Well, there you go. I watched the video, vegan teacher. You can never tell me I didn't. <laughs> so yeah, factory farming is bad, but I'm not a vegetarian or a vegan. What's my opinion on Beyond and Impossible Meats? They're very good. I said that's amazing. They're like 80% there. They're like 80% tasting like real meat. I'm so happy to hear that. I said, what's the name? And he said, um, 
I said, okay, I'm going to say it four times to make sure that you know it. Right? Ready? Don't watch dot org. Don't watch dot org. Don't watch dot org. Don't watch dot org. That's the video you should watch. And when you go there, by the way, there's a link when it says um, help or recipes, you can go to Bosch.tv, which has amazing recipes that can help you to be vegan. So that even if you can't save those particular animals, these ones that I'm asking... Greens Aplenty says they say if insects had lungs, they could be six feet tall. Who, who says that? Who says that? <laughs> what? Uh, Joe Aconite with a link. <laughs> My fingers are bored. They need something to do. What's that? I can tickle you. Yeah. Tickle, 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 um, why do they call it don't watch? I think it's it's supposed to be like, ooh, it's so controversial. Don't watch this, but watch it. It's, it's ironic. It's reverse psychology. It's don't watch this. It's what the meat industry doesn't want you to see. It's that kind of marketing. Asking you to call the locksmith for and call in the army to save. At the very least. Yeah, I get it. It's a vegan teacher. <laughs> I think I'm done with her for the day. Uh... You gotta breathe, man. Breathe. <laughs> Speedy Yoshi with a clip. Call the police. <laughs> Hello, Fox Unstoppable. This milkshake. And now I'm gonna take. Now I'm gonna take the rest of this milkshake, and I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have some fun with it. And I'm gonna make it. Apparently, I'm gonna make a big mess too. <laughs> oh well. Here we go. <laughs> Okay. My man is so sexy. He got me going from bisexual to straight. Mm -hmm. I, that's not how that works. Can you see the end of that road? I can't. So will you walk with me? Will you show me? What end of that road is? Will you walk with me and show me? Or you sit on the sidelines and just watch. I'm good, man. You guys, go. we went a Goodwill Skeleton yeah. Prince Adventure thrift store score with my with my friend Kevin Crow. We're gonna get some awesome emo clothes from Goodwill. We're gonna find those OG band shirts. We're gonna find the cool jeans. Everything. They were being so furred by my mom. I love you, mom. She tried. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. You can't make me go insane. You can't. I'm gonna try these crybaby bubblegum balls. They're supposed to be extra sour. Let's try the blue. Oh, oopsie, I dropped it. Okay, I got it. Let's try it. It's sour. 
Is that like a fetish thing? I'm here to help. Don't you run. Don't run! I am your friend. That guy looked like Chip Hazard if he became a real person. You guys remember Chip Hazard? I had the talking Chip Hazard action figure. I wish I hadn't thrown it away. Wires, let's go! I don't even know what franchise this is for. It looks like a Power Rangers thing, but I don't think it is. Common Rider? Okay. Hey, she! I love you too, Baja. Yeah, Small Soldiers was the first movie we watched together. Uh, Mike Max says, Common Rider. We will protect the world from evil. We are. Come on, He's just having fun. I I don't really like when they put kids and younger people and teens and stuff into the cringe compilations. Because of course kids and teenagers are cringe. We've all been there. I don't think it's very nice. <laughs> Daddy Sume says more like coming, Rider. Look at this fucking chat. Hello, all you good-looking women on TikTok. This is from old man over here. I just won't holler out at y'all. I'm single, and I'm looking for a good-looking woman. Bye. What do you think of my hot pink hat? Isn't it sick? I can't wait for people to see it. That's it? Am I just supposed to be like, oh, how cringe that this old lady likes her hat? I'm not a fan of whoever put this compilation together. <laughs> I'm not gonna fucking make fun of a lady for enjoying her new hat, you dick. Mike Max says the common rider that his belt belongs to is actually the strongest. He's basically a time god. <laughs> hmm. Oh yeah, this is terrible. Did you guys see this? This might be a content warning. Yeah, there we go. Um, this is uh, Drake Bell during um, trial. One of his victims uh, giving testimony. Was that white culture? I guess so. The female victim in Drake Bell's child endangerment case gave an emotional statement in court about her experience with the former Nickelodeon star. NBC News is not showing the woman on camera because she was a minor when the incident occurred. That led to my aunt taking me to meet him for the first time. My aunt had a meet. When I was 11, I learned that my aunt had a mutual friend who knew the defendant. That led to my aunt taking me to meet him for the first time in 2014 when I was 12. When I was 13, I went to him for boy advice. He told me that I was beautiful and that boys were stupid. He then sent me a photo of myself that he had screen capped from my Instagram, telling me that I was, quote, such a cutie. Another instance of creepy behavior 
happened when I was spending time with him at the age of 14. He told me that he couldn't believe how much I'd grown since he last saw me. He said that I wasn't little anymore and I was quote, a woman now. When I was 15, I noticed a huge shift regarding his treatment and attitude towards me. When I was younger, he was sweet and actually wanted to talk to me about my life. But at 15, he started sending me messages about how, quote, hot I was. In the summer of 2017, I messaged him, telling him that I was going to see him in concert in the following months. He replied by telling me that he couldn't wait to see me. He also asked me, quote, how old are you now? I told him 15. He then told me to, quote, hurry up, don't smile at me. Not too long after that, his messages to me became blatantly sexual. This eventually led to many months of inappropriate messages and photos being exchanged over Instagram and Snapchat. The photos exchanged included photos of- <laughs> Alexander OV says, is that Matt Gates? I'm just jumping in. <laughs> no, that's not Matt Gates. <laughs> No, that's uh, Drake from Drake and Josh. Coming soon. I wish, I wish, I wish I was Drake Bell. You're the boss. <laughs> oh, <screaming. laughs> All right, that's good. <laughs> yes, it's a different Drake. Dude, my God. My body and photos of his body and his genitals. On December 1st, 2017, my aunt took me to the Odeon Concert Club to watch him perform. That night, the defendant took me backstage to be alone with him. He started kissing me and the night ended and him having me perform oral sex on him twice. I idolized and looked up to him and he took that and broke it in the most sickening way possible. He is the epitome of evil. I deserved better than to be used for his sick desires and for my suffering to be used for his amusement. Jared Drake Bell is a pedophile and that is his legacy. Um, Your Honor, I, I just wanna to say today that I accept this plea because my conduct was wrong. Um, I'm sorry that the victim was harmed in any way, but that was obviously not my intention. Um, I have taken this matter very, very seriously. Um, and again, I just want to apologize to her and, and uh, anyone else who may have been affected by my actions. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our... Let's see what's going on with that. Um, <clears throat> he was sentenced to probation. Probation for grooming an underage girl and having her perform oral sex on him. I hate everyone, everyone is the absolute worst, everything is terrible, and justice is a lie. Cleanse. Meet Bucky. He is a bull mastiff and Labrador mix, and this is his first professional grooming appointment. He was very nervous about the water, so he taught my arm a good lesson. So after leaving me with some pretty good wounds, I decided to clip his sharp puppy claws before the bath. Yeah, Josh Peck is still cool, I guess. I think he's doing um, the Turner and Hooch remake on Disney+. Plus. He's the one that's not the dog. Instead of using my shampoo nozzle, I took the diluted shampoo and poured it on his body and he was far less nervous. For a dog like Bucky, that will grow to be very big and strong, it's important to get them accustomed to grooming at a young age. I rinsed him down using my Savior Fur Nozzle, 
and he gives me his adorable puppy dog eyes. I towel him dry, and because of his obvious fear of- Is Turner or Hooch the dog? I've never seen Turner and Hooch. Is Hooch the dog? The water. I use a hypoallergenic wipe. Hooch is the dog. <laughs> I prefer the answer. No one knows. <laughs> Every episode, it just changes. To wipe his face clean. And then oh, I blow poor baby. Dry him with the high velocity dryer. It always astounds me that a dog can be so fearful of a warm stream of water and yet so relaxed for loud, high power air blowing at them. <laughs> I sprayed him down in our blueberry pie pet cologne by Groomer's Choice, and then I finished off his grooming today with some much-deserved treats. And now, please enjoy some puppy cuteness. What a cutie. I don't think I'd want a dog just because they're a little more needy than cats. Like, I love cats. I love cats and I love Lupine, our two kitties. They're wonderful. I love cuddling with them and sleeping with them and petting them and spending time with them. But, you know, cats will kind of go do their own thing. You know, they go and they, they fuck off and, 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 and go and entertain themselves. <laughs> you know, I feel like a dog is a little more like, I constantly need your attention. But I have nothing against dogs. Dogs are cute. I just don't think I'd want to live with one again. I had dogs growing up, and I did love those dogs, but I don't know. My dad treated those dogs pretty badly, so I, I don't know. Uh, my dad was the kind of person that, like, saw pets and animals as property and I understand legally their property but you know what I mean by that you ever see a person who treats their dog like they're not like a living being but just a thing that they own bad shit and one time uh uh he got real mad at the dog I don't remember why but he drug it out in the yard and like beat it up so that wasn't good Ender92 says, Hannah, I have information. Peter Kane, dog training, Sasquatch Raven guy, has a TikTok and it's awful. Peter Kane, who is that? Sasquatch Raven guy. I don't remember who that is. Open your eyes. No. Open them. No. Open them. Is this just a full on <laughs> hour long Doug Walker cringe compilation? I will staple your eyelids to your forehead. Then that wasn't so bad. I'll have to play a part named Catwoman. A new video game confessions with Branca. I thought I really found my calling when I became a lifeguard. That is until the electricity goes off. And I knew that guy riffs with the very first Superman cartoon. I'll give you the greatest story of destruction the world has ever known. I'm going to bring back Jersey Shore. With hours and hours of entertainment, there is little you can do to- He claimed a Bigfoot fucked him. What? Big Sweet Demon says you want to feel like you don't know how to be a human for a minute and a half. Hi, my name is Carla Shaw. You can stop at five or six stores or just one. I don't need friends. They disappoint me. Hi, I'm Todd LaRue. You can stop at five or six stores or just one. I feel like a deer in the headlights of love. We've watched this. It's funny, though. Honey, you got a big storm so coming. What's this one? What's this? What's this? Is that Oshino-san? No, I don't know. 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 あれか。あれは遥か遠き国に住むコアラという動物でな。一人夏にで抱っこしたりすると、むちゃくちゃ可愛いんだ。確かに超可愛いよね。確かに。ものすごく抱っこしたい。多分、おしなさんの勘違い
It's like the rabbit from Monty Python. Yeah, kind of the same joke, isn't it? There's a four foot tall wine glass at Costco. Don't you frickin' dare. Mistakes were made. What's up guys and welcome back to MK. My name is Damien and today we're looking through r slash Mad Lads. The average teacher in the United States makes $58,353 a year. This is a disgrace. Under my administration, we will bump that up to $69,420 a year. Hell yeah, Ace Watkins. He's got my vote. <laughs> oh, I don't like this guy. How to use your toilet to make ice cream? Oh no, I've seen this lady! Okay, you want to get that nice and clogged. Okay, there we go. So that's all. Uh, all the ice in there. Then you have your sherbet here. Yeah, do okay. it. Just pop that in. There wow. We go. Maybe one more. One more of these. Oh, this is gonna be so good. That looks great. It's gonna be amazing, okay? You want all your sour candies in there. Perfect. Really mush it around. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's great. And yep. then this, oh, yep. you already emptied this yeah, part. Yeah, I emptied great. that part. Yeah, yep. let's do it. So some of these in here. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh right. my goodness. Yeah. And some more sour candies. Oh, so these are all, they just, they just want to be sour stuff. Yeah, so then you're going to grab your punch. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> Do you think this lady catches the ice cream with her hand before it goes in the bowl, too? You got me. Mike Mag says the disgusting thing is the flavors of the ice cream they use. <laughs> and you're just going to start loading up this tank back here. Obviously. It better be an unused toilet, but I think they had another video that's like this, like where they did another one. Sprite. Yeah. If you want to get your Sprite in there. The this is disgusting either way. Why would I want to mix Sprite and like red Fanta and mix it with my ice cream? Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. It's so colorful. It's so nice. It's really nice. And then when you flush. Fardlock Moses, thanks for subscribing at tier one for 11 months. Watch, watch what happens when you flush. Okay? Oh, well, everything from the tank is going to go through into yep. the sherbet and the ice. Yep. Diabetes, America, like fuck yeah. Tube Man says, I watched Hassan react to these and it's a weird outdoor toilet. What do you mean it's a weird outdoor toilet? I just want to make sure you fill that nice and full. So here we go. We can replace this. Okay. okay. Now watch this, okay? So we have all of that in there. That looks pretty good. That does look yeah, good. Yeah, that looks really okay. good. I'm going to get the cups ready. Mix that all around. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Wow. I'm going to have one of these. This is just flood, too. Uh, Ashy Boo says, these videos are made owned by a Facebook magician named Rick Lax. They won't be eating it, and it's just meant to be an outrageous to get clicks. It's such a waste of food. I know. It's still disgusting. It, like, viscerally disgusts me. Oh, yeah. Uh, Unconditional Prong, thanks for 10 months, says, going to see Black Widow with the girlfriend tomorrow. Won't be able to see Peter's Trump is winning stream. Yeah, Peter's doing a live stream tomorrow. <laughs> mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. So oh, she ate it! She ate some! Mix it up a little bit, and then when you and flush... And then you flush, and then we get to scoop it out? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's... I want to okay. make sure it's nice and mixed, okay? Okay. You really mix it in there. It's going to be great. Okay. Ready? Yeah. I think okay. people are going to like it. <laughs> yeah, it's outside! What the fuck? Yeah, they're going to love it. Okay. Okay. And we're going to flush it. Should we, should we take off the lid so we can see? Yeah. Are you good? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. I want right, to see it. Do it. This, you know, it could overflow, so we're not. Really we need there. a cleanse stream oh, at some we point. Wow. I guess. So it starts. Oh, look! It is. It's filling up. Wow. It's filling up. Yeah, there it is. Wow. Mhm. Mm That's there incredible. I did okay. see Tom Brady so now joke it's about all Trump. Mixed in. That's great. You can go ahead and just get that in there. Get some ice in the punch. Yes. And we're gonna serve it up to our friends up here. All right. Yeah. Hey guys, we got the punch. Oh, 
Santa oh, nice. oh, Plans oh, here. Oh, one oh, for oh, you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers, everyone. Oh, yes. Yeah, really Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Nice. That's really good. Yeah. Oh, so you so can smell it. Yeah. Don't. Uh, yeah. How'd you make it? Uh, the toilet bowl punch recipe. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <gasps> I love it. I think I'm good. I think. And I'm okay. Oh, no. I cleaned the toilet before I made it. <laughs> Speedy Yoshi says, Hannah, I have no words for you anymore, and then posts a link. Where is, wait, where is the music? Stop it. Ugh. Oh, God. No. No! No! This is the worst. This is the worst. I could maybe eat one or two hot dogs a year. I'm not a big fan of hot dogs. I don't know if I'll ever eat a hot dog again thanks to that video. Killjoy with another link. Check out these disgusting recipes from the glory days of Jello. Oh, yeah. The savory, the savory jellos that they used to make are so disgusting. This is one of the first thing Baha and I talked about when we started talking. We sent each other pictures of these disgusting jellos and talked about them. <laughs> Nasty. Yeah, they did the counter spaghetti. We call that the Ron Swanson. Right on the countertop. Yep, um, all my friends are coming over. Countertop. Yep. Yeah. Shitty meatballs. Oh, right in line. Gosh. Yep. I do like Parmesan. Wow. Chat, we're gonna do a poll. Between these two cheeses, what is the best cheese? One Speedy Yoshi says, so you want to make, you want that jello at your wedding? Got it. I'm contacting the caterer now. And then you take your noodles. Oh my gosh. Both are gross. Get out. What are you doing? Princess Amelia says, how come that vegan teacher can't put me off my food, but this can? <laughs> and you just dump it. Yep. So you just shake. I don't think this is going to be enough noodles. Yeah. You definitely want to make sure you have enough. Right there. Wow. Just like. That's so cool. Take. You just fold it. It looks really good at it. And yeah. You want it all covered. This is amazing. Where did you see this? Gross. Romano is the superior cheese. I don't know if I've had Romano. Bologna cake. Oh no, someone made one of these. It's like cold. It's like cold stone creamery for pasta. Can't tell if it's real or not. It's not. So big thanks to Hannah for getting in touch with me via Facebook. Okay. And sending me a reminder. I'm just going to the results. I actually like this this uh, woman. I've seen some of her other stuff. We're gonna take our beloved bologna. Isn't it beautiful? Look at all those lovely pink layers, separated with that. Cream cheese, beautiful. I'm gonna grab my. Oh, it's a cream cheese. Oh, and slice myself a piece of this cake. Itadakimasu. <laughs> Big sweet demon says, "Hannah, you're making me more vegan uh, than the vegan teacher ever has, and I'm not liking it." Nick says, "Cream cheese is good." Unsubscribe. Cream cheese is one of the only cheeses I don't like. It's on the opposite end of the cheese spectrum. I don't like cream cheese. I don't like cottage cheese. I'm a fan of Parmesan and Asiago and hard, dry cheeses. Okay? I like my hard cheeses, people. It's where it's at. 
get get this get this cottage cheese cream cheese soft cheese out of my fucking face okay <laughs> um two man says remember that millennials are killing uh mayo articles from a few years ago here's a dramatic reading <laughs> thank you um what about whiz cheese well that's a cheese product or a cheese flavored product it's not real cheese Riverboat Jack's reaction to thick water sausage. Uh, Nick says, I used to have a hedgehog that loved cottage cheese. Stromboli for Wi-Fi says, at an Irish pub picking up some pub grub. What's your favorite pub grub? I don't know what would be considered pub food. I don't go to pubs. Uh, Kirthen says, what about ricotta? I don't think I've ever had ricotta. No, wait, I have. It's okay in dishes, I guess. I've had, like, the stuffed shells that are stuffed with ricotta, and those are pretty good. RTK says you like your cheeses like Ben Shapiro likes his wife. Redacted. <laughs> Parmesan one. I think she's searching for something nice to say. You know what? It's kind of great. <laughs> In a totally overprocessed, decadent kind of way. This is very, very salty. I think I could have used about half as much as I put on that last cracker. Uh, Woohoo, Lulu, Bologna, thanks for subscribing for 14 salty. months. And the ranch dressing in there is really salty. I'm glad I only used half a package to that amount of cream cheese because any more than that, I think it would be too heavy. So this is processed food heaven. You've got the very salty, smoky, softly textured bologna that is enrobed in cream cheese that is filled with this very strong, ranch dressing flavor. It actually goes really well together. And then you've got the spray cheese for a little additional color and a punch of fake American cheese flavor. <laughs> Tastes like mm. a Trump rally in 2021. Mm. But almost gross. Hello murderers and millennials. My name is Timmy Skyne and um I found this article today. It got it got, it got posted around and I I I thought it was like the onion or a parody of some sort no no this is philadelphia magazine which is like just like a genuine online magazine kind of thing apparently um and i just i think we should just read it i think we should just read it because this this article is special i think it's special how millennials killed mayonnaise the inexorable rise of identity condom <laughs> what's identity okay. condiments mean <laughs> The inexorable rise of identity condiments has led to hard times for the most American of foodstuffs, and that's a shame. I write this in the dead of summer, always a bittersweet season. Why is it we got summers off from work from school for all those years, but don't get summers off from work? That's 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 a very good question, our author of this article, Sandy Hingston. But doubly depressing these days, when I find myself suffering from picnic panic. The hot, languid weather brings with it a series of outdoor family events for which, as a tribal elder, I am charged with providing provisions. So this is starting very strong. Like, we get the stakes of the situation that there is picnic panic, and she is the tribal elder charged with guarding the rest of her people against these the terrible wrath of the picnic gods. Lately, though, I've had my feet cut out from under me for years, nay, decades! My contributions to the Hingston clan's Memorial Day and Fourth of July and Labor Day gatherings were no-brainers. I made what my mother once made. She was such a good cook that when she died prematurely... Why is that funny to me? I'm gonna read it myself. I don't like this guy's voice either. <clears throat> I made what my mother once made. She was such a good cook that when she died prematurely, my husband and I typed up and photocopied, quaint, I know, a book of her recipes, tried and true favorites on which she built her formidable culinary reputation. When the holiday rolled around, I simply recreated one of her delicious dishes and toted it along. Morak says, this guy can be a bit of a tanky at times. I used to follow him pretty closely. Ooh. Um, about a decade ago, though, I began to notice I was touting 
uh, home as much of my offerings as I'd concocted. My contributions were being overlooked or shunned. Why should this be? Mom's extraordinary potato salad, fragrant with dill spiced with celery seed, went untouched on the picnic table. So did her macaroni salad and her chicken salad and her deviled eggs. When I carted home a good three pounds of painstakingly prepared Waldorf salad, all that peeling and coloring and slicing, I was forced to face facts. The family's tastes had changed. Or rather, our family had changed. Oldsters were dying off, and the young'uns taking our place in the paper plate line were different somehow. <laughs> uh, Steve with a Q says, complaining about identity condiments screams white mayo privilege. <laughs> I don't really like mayo either. I Once in, in a blue moon, I'll put like mayo on like a cheeseburger or something. But otherwise, I don't really touch mayonnaise ever. I guess I don't get it. I don't know. I racked my brain for the source of the generational disconnect, and then, one holiday weekend while surveying the condiments set out at a family burger bash, I found it. On offer were four different kinds of mustard, three ketchups, one made from, I kid you not, bananas, seven sorts of salsa, kimchi, wasabi, relishes of every ilk and hue. What was missing, though, was the common foundation of all mom's picnic foods. Mayonnaise. Well, I wasn't watching. Mayo's day had come and gone. It was too basic for contemporary tastes. Pale and insipid and not nearly exotic enough for our era of globalization. Good old Mayo has become the Taylor Swift of condiments. <laughs> what the fuck does that even mean? My mom was the daughter of Lithuanian immigrants, born in the era in which the huddled masses clambered ashore at Ellis Island. Their po This is an article about mayonnaise. What the fuck, lady? <laughs> Their pockets stuffed with kielbasa and chorizo and braunschweiger and mackinac and lapchung were processed in the great American assimilation grinder, emerging to dine happily ever after on Hatfield hot dogs and potato salad. Her entire life she worried about sticking out, about not fitting in. She was self-conscious that her parents spoke with accents. She worked like a tiger to haul herself out of South Philly via Girls High in Temple, where she met my dad, who's a... Excuse me whose American heritage stretched a few decades further back, and whose people came from the British Isles, the <laughs> uh, omphalos of bat bland food. <clears throat> America in the 1950s was full of strivers like Mom, desperate to forget family legacies of latkes and boxties, and uh, bromperatki pouring through the passages of Family Circle and Good Housekeeping and Women's Day for Stars and Stripes recipes that wrapped their newfound land. They wanted all their strangeness to dissolve into the sizzling pot of Crisco that crisped their French, not French, fries. I don't think that's true. Like, sure, American popular cuisine did develop through like magazines and cooking shows and stuff but like people still make their family cultural dishes like what are you talking about big sweet demon says did you hear about the cadbury cream egg mayonnaise no no i didn't ew granted it's profoundly unfortunate in uh esculent terms that the nation's newcomers fixated on foods from england and ireland and scotland but women's magazines back then were almost exclusively edited by wasps Besides, the Imperatus seemed righteous. In a world torn asunder by the Great Depression, the Holocaust, and two world wars, our citizenry needed to come together, be united, rally behind a collective vision of what it meant to be American. You lived in a single-family house. You drove a station wagon. You wore bowling shirts and blue jeans. And you slathered mayonnaise on everything from BLTs to burgers to pastrami on rye. How do you think hold the mayo became a saying? Is that a saying? Do people say hold the mayo in situations outside of when there's mayo that needs to be removed from an item? There was always mayo, and if you were some kind of deviant who didn't want it, you had to say so out loud. <laughs> what the fucking shit is this article? 
My son Jake, who's 25, eats mayo. He's a practical young man who works in computers and adores macaroni salad. He's a good son. I also have a daughter. She was a woman's and gender studies major in college. Naturally, she loathes mayonnaise! <laughs> Those goddamn women studies majors killing the mayonnaise industry. <laughs> what the fucking fuck? And she's not alone. Ask the young people you know their opinion of mayo and you'll be shocked by the depths of their emotion. Oh, there's an occasional outlier like Jake. But for the most part, today's youth would sooner get their news from an actual newspaper than ingest mayonnaise. This is the most boomery boomer shit I think I've ever heard. Like, Everybody, hold the mayonnaise. <laughs> uh, actually, I want one with extra mayo. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't really like mayo very much either. Like I said, very occasionally on. Oh, where is that music coming from? There we go. Like I said, I don't really like mayonnaise. Um, but it's not, like, politically motivated. It's just gross. <laughs> Daddy Sume says, I make my own mayo, Hannah. Would you like a taste? No, thank you. RTK says, okay, I'm one of those ones that straddles the Gen X millennial border. Most of the time I lean Gen X, but this, this has me flying my millennial flag hardcore. The origins of this contentious condiment are hotly debated. In its name, derived from the city of Mahon on the uh, Balearic island of Menorca, where the Duke de Richelieu's chef, unable to find cream for a sauce to celebrate his lordship's successful siege during the Seven Years' War, substituted an emulsion of eggs and oil, or is it a bastardization of bayonnaise from the Gaelic town renowned for its tasty hams? Whatever, either way, the dressing had crossed the Atlantic by 1838 when Chi Chi Manhattan restaurant Delmonico's offered both lobster and chicken mayonnaise on its menu. Mayo spread uh, to the more common man after the invention of the mechanical bread slicer just in time for sandwiches to be tucked inside brown bags and unwrapped in the lunchrooms of the nation's factories. Mayonnaise at this point was still mostly handmade, whipped up by wives as needed, but the culinary horizon was shifting. I miss bits. I'm, I apologize. Let me go find him. Mayo, the spice sauce for white people. <laughs> um... In 1912, the German immigrant owner... Can, I, can we just get back to the... I don't give a shit about the history of mayonnaise. I'm gonna be real. I don't... I don't care. One of the reasons for mayonnaise's early popularity, according to public health historian David Merritt Johns, was that it served to disguise flaws in the ingredients it coated. Potatoes past their dual date, flabby cabbage, tuna that was less than pristine. Young people like my daughter somehow seem to have extrapolated this masking function from condiment to culture. For them, mayo quite literally whitewashed America's immigrants into eating dull food, and newer generations are refusing to meekly fall in line with a culinary heritage that never was theirs. Instead, they're gobbling up uh, kefir and ajvar and kim <laughs> chimi chi chimi churi and gochujang again they're also shutting their parents preferred restaurants applebee's ruby tuesdays and tgi fridays yeah i can microwave my own food <laughs> why would i go to a fucking applebee's um, to seek out more authentic fare, old school eateries, in turn, are diversifying in their search for new customers. Just this year, Red Lobster rolled out waffles and lobster options, and Red Robin launched a vegan burger. You don't put mayo on a vegan burger. McDonald's has debuted a signature sriracha burger, joining KFC, Wendy's, and Subway and signaling on to the sizzling Thai sauce's moment in the sun. You don't see uh, Hui Fong Foods start a schmear campaign against the cultural appropriation of that. Oh my god, this lady's the fucking worst. I hate this woman. 
But what young people really love to hate on mayonnaise is back in 2013, BuzzFeed ran an article titled 24 Reasons Mayonnaise is the Devil's Condiment. The writer called it the slime of Satan. Just three years later, BuzzFeed ran another piece, 23 Things You'll Only Understand If You Fucking Hate Mayo. Does this lady think that the cultural zeitgeist of millennial belief about or, 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 or opinion about mayo is directed by a BuzzFeed article? What is rotting this woman's brain? Is it the mayonnaise? <laughs> Tube Man says, The only time I can eat mayo is in my mom's potato salad, and that's only because my mom is a really good cook. Otherwise, leave that shit away from me. Yeah, like, I don't like mayo just because I think it's gross. I think the texture's gross. I'm not really into the flavor. Like, I, I just don't like it. And the, the idea that it's just like eggs, it's an emulsion of like eggs and oil. It's just, I don't like it. It's gross. There's nothing political about my dislike of mayonnaise. What the fuck? Uh, Drew uh, Maggery penned a piece for Bon Appetit with the headline, Big Mayo Will Destroy Us All. A movie called The Mayo Conspiracy won the best comedy feature at the 2015 World Independent Film Festival. It concerns the gradual uncovering by a journalist of a mayonnaise cartel that plans to take over the world. Clearly there's something more to this river of resentment than a um, mincible mixture of eggs and oil, and it's obvious to me that this condiment divide can be traced to young folks' rejection of what they sneeringly consider a boring white food. Do you think 23andMe and MyHeritage and all those other DNA testing companies are flourishing because people want to find out their ancestors came from Aberdeen? Hells no. They want to be from Marrakesh, or Manchuria, or Malawi. It's the same with condiments. I'm not part of the elderly mayo masses. I'm turkey and Swiss on a ciabatta with tzatziki, chipotle spread, and a little basil pesto. That's who I am, damn it. My sandwich. Myself. <laughs> what the fucking shit? I just don't like mayonnaise. I just don't like it. It's just gross. <laughs> Why did this become a racial thing? RDK says, Yes, BuzzFeed is the pinnacle of millennial and leftist culture. Civil War II electric boogaloo fan Tim Poole said so. <laughs> Granted, there are other theories regarding mass generational mayonnaise rejection. Tastes change. Culinary trends change all the time. Someday mayo might become popular again, and that's fine. I don't have anything morally against mayo. <laughs> I just don't like it. I don't think I've ever bought a jar of mayo in my life. I've never bought mayo. Why would I? It's gross. <laughs> it has nothing to do with anything about mayo other than I don't like it. Granted, there are other theories regarding mass generational mayonnaise rejection. Some experts say the dislike springs from the fact that mayo jiggles. You may have noticed youth's similar circumvention of gelled, gelled salads. My mom made a dynamite one with blackberry, jello, walnuts, olives, canned cherries, and small balls of cream cheese. Oh, she's defending the disgusting 1950s jello salads. That explains a lot. Big Sweet Demon says, these people don't make your gender or sexuality your identity. Also these people, my sandwich, myself. <laughs> Others posit that mayonnaise is reminiscent of bodily fluids, and therefore, as Penn psychology professor Paul Rosen had suggested, too disgusting to ingest. Did this lady just say people don't like mayonnaise because it reminds them of cum? This is bullshit. <laughs> this is bullshit. This attitude comes from young people who willingly slurp down gazillion kinds of yogurt, not to mention raw fish and pork belly and yo detergent pods. So don't talk to me about mayonnaise. The only reason for this raging mayophobia is a generation's gut level renouncement of the greatest generation's condiment of choice! <laughs> Tube Man says you're welcome for this article chat, thank you. 
Uh, Shark Wolf Dark Wolf, thanks for four months, says raise his hand. Is mayonnaise an instrument? And, uh, rat? Oh, God. Rats live on Evil Star. Thank you for 100 bits, says some of us love cum. I'm sure you do. <sighs> RTK says Gen X doesn't give a shit about condiments or anything. <laughs> I... I can't get over the weird entitlement of this lady and her weird boomer SJW opinions. Like, like I, I call her that specifically because she's like doing the boomer version of <sighs> trying to impose some sort of weird thing. I don't get it. I don't know. Steve with a Q says, Hannah, let's not make fun of this woman. She's clearly a veteran of the Mayonnaise Miracle Whip War of 57. <sighs> but here's the thing. The all-American condiment didn't have to be mayonnaise. It could have been ketchup or mustard. I mean, in my head, it is ketchup. If I think of, like, what's America's condiment? I think ketchup. Ketchup. Everyone eats ketchup. It goes on everything. I think ketchup. But Okay. Um, hell, it could have been horseradish, but it wasn't. It's not Mayo's fault that it's been so successful that it glimpsed a condiment breach and jiggled right on through. As Boston chef Scott Jones and Ari Lavaw, the magic that sets mayonnaise above Coke and Heinz is that Mayo is a perfect flavor carrier. Does she think Coca-Cola is a condiment? Coke is a beverage. What? It just makes everything better. Need proof? Do other condiments have pale imitators like Miracle Whip? Just mayo and veganaise? I don't think so. I mean, butter has margarine and, and vegan, you know, butter. Like, there are a lot of other food items that have taste-alikes. That's not uncommon. Ahem. <clears throat> Killjoy says, I can't wait for the one joke to be brought up somehow. You say you're, you're aioli, but our mayonnaise. <laughs> Maybe she, she thinks mayo is a beverage. She doesn't drink any water. She only drinks mayo. It's why she she's delirious all the time. That's how she wrote this. <laughs> she's just, she's mayo drunk. She's drunk on mayo. <laughs> Her brain can't function because all it gets is more mayonnaise. <laughs> Cool Cat says she just brought up uh, uh, brought up seven alternate ketchups through this article, right? Hey, we're all capable of growth, you know. I add a little fish sauce to my stir fry these days. I have a bottle of salsa Lozano on my refrigerator door. I thought young people today were supposed to be all about inclusion, about kindness and compassion, and making other people feel welcome. So how about you include a little mayo in your picnic fare? Mayonnaise has been the building block for a thousand different tweaks in a rainbow of cultures. Russian dressing, uh, remoulade... Comeback sauce, fry sauce, Q pie, salsa rosada, mayo chup. Just because something is old and white doesn't mean it's obsolete. Look at Shakespeare. Look at me. This look at me is the most. <laughs> Can I title this highlight on YouTube as mayonnaise a beverage? You got it. That's brilliant. You just realized mayo is the only non-vegan condiment? That can't be true. <laughs> this is this is pathetic. I, I kind of feel for this woman. What the fuck kind of weird, entitled person wrote this article? You want to link to the article? Here it is. Honey mustard isn't vegan. Yeah, true. Honey mustard is delicious, though. If I'm if I'm getting if I need if I'm eating like chicken strips or something that requires like dipping sauce, honey mustard, honey mustard, please. I love me some honey mustard. <laughs> You're delicious. Thank you, Baja. You're delicious too. <clears throat> Then again, it may be too late to stanch the mayo hate. 
America may already be too far gone. While I was researching this article, what do you think, I just pulled this stuff out of thin air? I came across news that for one brief shining moment filled me with hope. An organization known as the Association for Dressing and Sauces, or ADS, took a poll that revealed something amazing. Millennials love mayo! The headline screamed. According to ADS, older millennials, those aged 25 to 34, is that even the older millennials? That's just like millennials now. That's the age of millennials, basically. Are the most frequent purchasers of mom's preferred condiment ahead of the next most frequent, which would happen to be my demographic, boomers aged 55 to 65. So what is this article about? If it's not even factually true that, like, millennials don't eat mayo, what the fuck is your problem? You're just butthurt that your family doesn't like your shitty food. Have you considered it's not the mayonnaise? Have you considered your recipes are bad and outdated? <laughs> uh, time somebody else out? Hold on. Who wanted me to time who out? Uh, no, I'm not timing out Baja. You can't time out the mods because it removes their mod status and it's a pain in the ass to get it back. You want a poll? Ask if you're delicious. Okay, I'm going to vote in the poll. I'm voting no. You are not delicious. <laughs> um... Granted, we boomers are all anxious to avoid the Mayo Clinic. Oh, is that a joke? Ha 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 ha. But could a new generation really be primed and ready to take up Richard Hellman's torch? Uh, no. Tucked well down in the report on the survey was this nugget, courtesy of ADS Executive Director Jeannie Milweski. We were founded as the Mayonnaise Products Manufacturers Association and had to change your name to stay relevant. Okay, associations for dressings and sauces. I see how it is. <laughs> the saddest part is, my mom's macaroni salad is banging. You kids are only eat cheating yourselves by rejecting it. Besides, I've got news. That aioli you're, you're, that aioli you're also fond of, I hate to break it to you. But that's just mayonnaise! Who is this fucking lady? What other stupid articles has she read, write, written? Time out somebody else. Uh, Lord Necro Jay-Z is using channel points to time out Daddy Sume. Daddy Sume. Someone time out Daddy Sume. <laughs> you make yourself a target, Daddy Sume. You draw attention, people are going to time you out. It's a double-edged sword. That's absolutely ridiculous, though. I can't fucking believe that that lady wrote a whole article about how mad she is that younger people don't like mayonnaise as much. Like, there's... I don't care if someone likes mayonnaise. That's fine. Um... You timed him out yesterday? Yeah? <laughs> he could be timed out two days in a row. Anyway, uh, so that's, that's the Mayo article. That's funny. What is thick water? I have no idea. It looks like he was eating cum. <laughs> it did. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I missed bits from Mike Max. Where's the link? I'm looking for it. Sorry. Repost the link. I can't find it. Daddy Sume officially is not delicious. The crowd has spoken. This dude is. Oh yeah, this I already. This dude is I, being called Mayo Man. I pulled it up. Cameras caught him eating mayonnaise straight out of a giant jug at a baseball stadium. It happened during a Memphis Redbirds minor league home game. Hold the phone. What is he eating? Tweeted the Redbirds. I'm pretty sure, like 90% of the time, when you see shit like this at a baseball game or a hockey game or any sporting event. It's just someone they pay to do that, so it gets put on ESPN or whatever, so people talk about their team. <laughs> like, I don't think this is true. Or this guy is just pranking everyone and he emptied out the mayonnaise container and put something edible in it. 
A few minutes later, the team posted video of Mayo Man being escorted from his seat. Moments later, he's back in another seat, still at it, now with a big stain of mayo on his shirt. The comments on social media? Gross. Vanilla pudding in a mayo jar? Yeah. The way. That jug of Kraft Real mayonnaise is huge. It holds a gallon inside. Is this really worthy of a whole fucking segment on this show? If you ate all of it, you'd be consuming, get this, 23,000 calories. But was he really eating mayonnaise in that video? And who is Mayo Man? The clue came from this Twitter posting from a guy who recognized Mayo Man's face. Clint Thrasher, what are you doing? Turns out that is his name, Clint Thrasher, and he works in ticket sales for the Redbirds, according to the team's website. So if it's all just a big publicity stunt? Like I said, it usually is. Well, mission accomplished. Well, you didn't have to run the story, did ya? <laughs> local news is fucking dead. I mean, that was Inside Edition. That's not local news. Two Man says, Mayo Man, I've never heard, I haven't heard that name in years. Every morsel of cheese has an important story to tell. Take this little guy, for example. Hey, what's your story? Oh, I'm Bothwell, non-GMO cheddar. I'm important because I'm the first Canadian non-GMO cheese. I'm expertly made from the milk of cows who eat only non-GMO feed. <clears throat> well, like I was saying, every cheese has an important story to tell. <laughs> the story behind this Parmesan is particularly interesting. It was a balmy Saskatchewan winter way back in 1943. It was fall 1921 at the University of Toronto. Oh, that's right. Thank you, dear. Scientists were on the verge of discovering a cure for nearsightedness. Insulin. Yes, insulin. But before they made the big discovery, they actually shredded some Parmesan on the pass that they ate for lunch. <laughs> Not just any parm. This parm. With the people at Bothwell continuing to create cheese choices, we are definitely living in the golden age of cheese lovers. And with every new cheese choice comes a new, important moment in Canadian cheese history. I think I've had that brand of cheese. It's pretty good. God, I, I love cheese. <laughs> Jeremy talking about the Ninja Turtle thing. Everyone, Jeremy are in real life, uh, turtles, male and female, don't look all that different. Uh, I don't know why the face uh, looks like, I don't know, E.T.? I, I don't know, like, if you hit... I think that's just what the Ninja Turtles look like without their things and that art style. Ugh, I fucking hate Jeremy. Oh my god, he was he was using one angry gamer as a source. That's the site that made the list of America's enemies. Remember that? <laughs> and it included, like, everyone. Ciao ragazzi, I'm Roberto from Past Evangelist, and today I want to show you the differences between the three odd Italian cheese that many people get confused. We have Grana Padano, Parmigiano Reggiano and Pecorino Romano. Sorry, not enemies, traitors, you're right. Grana Padano is We need to just have a cheese stream one day. We'll just do a whole three hour stream where we only watch videos related to cheese. Anything about cheese, it's production its uses, it's, it's just information about cheese. Originally from North Italy, the area of Padania, it dates back to the 12th century. RTK says, sign me up for that. Chiaravalle is a 16 month matured cheese with a really distinguished structure, which you can see the crystal in the body. I will say the best recipe to pair Grana Padano, it could be risotto alla Milanese, 
or wine or uh, pizzoccheri. Also really nice and uh, hot cereal soup. Parmigiano Reggiano, one of the most famous cheese in Italy, originally from the area of Parma and Reggio, is a cheese of a minimum 12 month maturation, but you can also get 30 to 36 months, which the flavor will slightly change. It will be more spicy and nutty flavor. And uh, I absolutely love to mix with my basil pesto or with a pistachio pesto or why not just a sprinkle on top of your favorite pasta and let me tell you how we love to eat in Italy we just love it to eat chunks of parmigiano and pair it with our favorite aperitivo pecorino romano is a cheese that comes from the region of Lazio is made with sheep milk and something nice to know about this cheesy chunk of pecorino was given to each of the Roman soldier. It's a nutty and tangy flavor. More you leave to mature, more spicy and stronger flavor will be gained. That's the best cheese whenever you want it to create your perfect carbonara. Or why not? Cacio and pepe. I hope you found this information. I love cheese. I love cheese. Great. I don't love this, though. It all fits that. Yeah. Okay. This is just regular. Okay. okay. And you're going to take Velveeta, a whole block, and you're just going to cut it right on to oh, wow. the top. Look at that. That looks really nice. Okay, great. Look at the way it all fits that Yeah, way. it's beautiful, right? Then you take milk, shake it. You want to make sure you cover the pasta, because that's how the pasta is going to cook. Oh, yeah. Pop that right in the oven. It's, it looks really good. What did the cheese do? The did cheese it... melted all over it, the pasta. Okay. Uh -huh. The pasta is nice and soft. The hot dogs are perfectly cooked inside. Wow. Look, look at, at this. Okay. And perfectly. Slice it down the middle. Slice it down the middle. Just slice nice. it right down the middle here. Look. Wow, mm. yum. Mm -hmm. mm. I think I'll get the pasta. I think I'll get the pasta. There's like fucking 60. Which one? Um. Ragatani, linguini, cannelloni, come on, you waste so much time, woman. Aren't they all the same? Get out. What? Get out. Yeah, that's right, get out. <laughs> oh. Uh, that was... Why has she done this? like an Indian soap opera or something? RTK says, uh, okay, seriously, whatever I am being punished for, I apologize. There. Look at that. It's, what do you want? You don't want it to make it too clumsy, too sticky. The sauce has to coat the pasta beautifully and they have to start to appreciate the flavor. And then you scream because she just destroyed a 10 million rupee Alienware laptop. What are the cheeses? Have I seen the tiny husband video? No. Mm -mm. 
lovely. Yeah, a fork. Do you know, it's, if it had, like, ham in it, it's closer to a British carbonara. <gasps> oh, no. It is. No, that's true. Oh, well, that's fine. I'm glad you're standing there. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? If my grandmother had wheels, she would have been a bike. <laughs> you know, what, you know, it's... <laughs> You know, what time is, you know, it doesn't make any sense what you said. It's a different recipe. It's got nothing to do with the macaroni cheese. You know, what? I agree. I random is what, can uh, uh, please anybody help me in the kitchen? Oh, God, my God, he choked. Oh, man. Stop it. Oh, dear. Well, very good. OK. Yep. OK. Yep. Yep. Then, uh, yeah, there we are. You can put a ham at home if you want. Excuse then, me. Uh, <coughs> Oh, you nearly polished both of us off there. That's great. God. Terrific. Gino, thank you. Okay. It is absolutely sensational. I feel like I'm playing an old DOS box game. Can't believe how huge they are. This is a fetish. God, imagine what Stuart Little saw, am I right? I'm leaving this alike. This ASMR is tingly. Woo! Oh, God, he's, really, he's getting in there. He's fucking splunking. Now what? Now what am I gonna do? They gotta huff those precious fumes. It's the only option. I have no doubt in my mind this guy graduated with some type of film degree, and this is how he uses his talent. <laughs> but man, think of where these shoes have been, the stories they tell, the feet they've seen. It's worth it. Oh no. Oh, no. I think she's coming. Good lord. I'm gonna have to stay at the very end here. Honey, I shrunk the feet. Too dangerous. Catch your foot! Oh God, no! No, we can't in this way. I won't be able to get. Activate Wombo. Oh, oh, first Joker now. I, I no, 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 no. No. I'm on a diet. I'm having a great banana day. Honduras, ustedes son unos duros. ¿Qué es lo que es mi gente? Hoy tenemos algo sumamente especial. So today, Maya and my sister and I are going to try Honduran food. Hoy voy a probar. Eh, I don't feel like watching that. I kind of got off track and this cringe stream turned into a whatever stream. <laughs> Oh yeah, did you guys see the ad for this new show? It looks bad. You got something on your face. Oh, I got it. Yuck. Excuse me. Are there any vegan options at this buffet? What if the most amazing animals in the wild? Anybody see my keys? Finally get a voice. Mr. Tall, Dark, and Handsome. We meet at last. Hey, baby. How's it hanging? You look nothing like your profile picture. When Nature Calls with Helen Mirren. New series Thursday on Global, also available on Stack TV and the Global TV app. Dolly Parton is pro-vax. Go get vaccinated, you fucking hick pieces of shit. RTK says, okay, humanity has had a good run. We deserve to be dead, and now how dare they destroy the one good Dolly Parton song. <laughs> Nine to five exists. Excuse you. Excuse you. I need an honest answer, and I don't know if Baja's still here or if she can answer this, but like, 
let's say 40% of the country, 35% of the country, let's say 40%, genuinely doesn't ever get vaccinated, how long would it take for a variant to develop that the vaccine is not, is not, um, effective against? Theoretically, I know there's not like heart, you can't, you can't predict something exact on that, but like, is there an estimate? Like how long it would potentially take? I'm just, just curious. <laughs> And in unfamiliar places that conform to a form you perform like a rhyme over time. Rhyming. Timing. Rhyming. Timing gotta keep up. The timing gotta keep up. The I know the Delta variant showed up within a year, but what I'm saying is the Delta variant, the vaccine is still effective against. The Poetic Fox. Um, thank you for subscribing for four months, says, four months, Hannah, four months, and I'm still sitting at Lens Crafters selling glasses to rednecks and carrots. <laughs> well, thanks for listening. Hey, guys. Um, this is, uh, I really can't upload a uh, recorded rap right now, but... Well, that's what I'm curious about, um, because... Like, the anti-vax problem, if we had a pandemic that only affected anti-vaxxers, or mostly affected anti-vaxxers, it's not a good thing, but at the very least, those who are proactive and get themselves and their children vaccinated would be protected. It still sucks, because I'm sure there are people who, for medical reasons, genuinely can't get vaccinated, and they're gonna be people, whatever. But, like, I'd feel a little better about it if at least those, you know who take precautions would be safe-ish. I'm gonna just do some just tide you guys over. And she doesn't even know this is coming, so... I yeah. don't. I really don't know what's happening. This is what I'm doing. What? I'm afraid. When I see your face It's not a thing that I I'm not gonna make fun of this. I'm not gonna make fun of that. I want to, but I won't. True toy. I can leave. Hold my head up high with my four. State-sponsored comedy from China. Let's see how the Chinese Communist Party fares in terms of uh, laughs, shall we? Has your wife ever gotten mad at you for behaving wrong in her dreams? I had a horrible dream last night. You want to hear about that? No. <laughs> I'm going to tell you anyway. You told me you've had enough of me and had fallen in love with another bitch. Where is she? <laughs> she doesn't exist. Prove it. <laughs> How to prove something that doesn't exist? This is China's current embarrassment. I think someone seized the means of humor and they never gave it back. This is not funny. <laughs> Muddy says, Joss got here. What kind of cringe did I miss? Oh, God. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise cringe. In recent weeks, a handful of U.S. media outlets and politicians have been hyping up the lap leak theory that has already been repeatedly repudiated by top virologists worldwide. But have you ever thought about where this lab leak theory came from? Wait, is it from the American movies? <laughs> Such as The Hot Zone, Resident Evil, The Crazies, Race of the Planet of the Apes? Well, I'm a big fan of them, honestly speaking, whether they're based on real events or imagination. Meanwhile, the movies can fully explain the reason why some U.S. politicians incline to think of a lap incident whenever there's a virus. 
they watch too many <laughs> movies. <laughs> or is it possible that the United States cooked up this hypothesis due to its own secret experience of previous lap leak incidents? Nick says the Mayo article was funny. The anti-vax Dolly Parton ripoff was evil. Wow, so much we don't know. If that's the case, in psychology, we call it the curse of knowledge. When they're making a judgment, they tend to be influenced by their previous knowledge or experience without realizing it. But we don't have the experience. Just play the laugh track after each sentence. <laughs> the laugh, neither. Here's another thing. A new study by the U.S. National Institutes of Health suggested that the coronavirus was present in the United States as far back as in December 2019, weeks before the first cases were officially reported. Uh -oh. Similar reports also showed the coronavirus emerged in Europe earlier. Given the fact that the coronavirus broke out in several parts of the world outside Asia, shall we go and search for the lab all over the world? Save your efforts. How can we find something that exists only in mind? <laughs> Next time your wife is mad at your behavior in her dreams, here's what you're gonna do. Generally give her a hug and say, darling, you've watched too many movies. <laughs> that is some weird uncanny valley shit. <laughs> uh... Two women explaining why they stole $150 from a nine-year-old Girl Scout cookie table. Okay, so what happened here uh, yesterday? I understand what happened. Basically, me and my friend Stephanie, we needed some money. We saw a girl selling Girl Scout cookies. We was that a CCC, CCP shill? It was, it's something produced by the Chinese government. I saw an envelope with money in it, and I grabbed it, and she drove away. Do I remember Permit Patty? Why did you do no. it? Because we needed money. We just wanted money. Thing I can do about it now, but probably not to get caught, or maybe not not to steal. Yeah, that was hot. And I just <laughs> to level for everyone. Tommy, Tommy. Near the White River. Uh, Ilium Gal says, I can't remember. Have you already covered the Hail Honey, I'm Home BBC Hitler sitcom? I've heard of it, but no. Morak says, I get off work 40 minutes ago and promptly passed out. I miss anything good? Uh, no. My stream's never good. So you're good. Oh yeah, the Austin Powers comparison. I know, everyone's made the joke. The rocket looked like a penis. It did look like a penis. Cold War anti-communist documentary. Makes every man a king. Okay, I'll save this for public domainia. A daily routine. Elvar the brat and Chi Chi the female were, female were separated for the night. Every this is the guy I think that developed that uh, dolphin lab um, where they tried to teach a dolphin to speak English and the trainer masturbated the dolphin regularly because he couldn't pay attention because he was horny. Dead butterfish followed from Puka the Duka, thanks for subscribing for eight months. Dr. Lilly wanted them to in imitate human speech, and they would to an extent. One of us would hold up a fish. They did give the dolphin LSD, too, which I find to be incredibly fucked up. Giving any animal hallucinogenic <laughs> drugs is abusive, in my opinion. Um, uh, uh, giving anyone hallucinogenic anything without their consent and understanding is 
not okay. Um, hallucinogens, even when you know what is happening to you, can be a scary experience. Um, giving them to an animal that can't possibly understand what's happening? Disgusting. Here at the feeding station, hold up the fish and say, Elvar won! And he would say, Wah! And get the fish. Then we'd say, Elvar two! And he would say, Ooh! And get the fish. After that, he wouldn't cooperate. When he and Chi Chi were back together, he would often flick out his penis, which operated like a switchblade. <clears throat> it was big and pink and curly, and he tried to mate, mate with Chi Chi, but we never saw it happen. Frank Asapian filmed this, and I edited the film for a conference. More on that later. Okay, some happy memories. My relationship to, Chi to Sissy. In the downstairs tank with Sissy, as we said. And she could swim in circles. She, would, she liked me, and she, as she swam by, she would often present her genitals, which I would caress and sometimes finger. She liked that. I contemplated coming in on a Saturday at a time no one would be around and actually attempting intercourse. I was young and horny and, I believe, capable. But the idea that I <clears throat> might be found dead, naked, and wrecked by dolphin teeth deterred me. I don't remember the following, but when I brought Debbie, my wife, to be to see, in to see Sissy, Sissy, Sissy hit her with a ten-gallon splat that is throwing a whole fluke load of water at her. Well, maybe it was only five gallons, but it was a lot. Debbie insists that Chi-Chi was jealous of her. Sissy immediately understood Debbie as a rival. It was a woman-woman thing. Don't! Here's... If, if you take away anything from our, our, our time here together... Don't fuck animals. That's, I think, the primary message of, of, of the Hannah Reloaded channel when it comes right down to it. Don't fuck animals. Don't fuck animals. Don't fuck them. Animals, don't finger them. Don't lick them. Don't suck them. Don't fuck them. They're animals. And now you know. Dune, 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 dune. Other happy memories. Gregory Bateson. I can say proudly that the great Gregory Bateson... Can you get a shirt that says what? Don't fuck animals? No. Bateson was my office mate for a month. He was an... What about fruit? You can fuck fruit if you want. Fruit, you can fuck. Immensely likable man, although his main book, uh, Notes Toward an Ecology of Mind, is uncomprehensible, incomprehensible. When I told him that I'd spent time with Margaret Mead, his former wife, he yelled enthusiastically, Oh, Margaret! And then some compliment. I may so long and thanks for all the fish. I may have told him that I was trying to think of a word for connected text on a computer. The medical discussion I remember having with Bateson was as follows. Don't, don't fuck a dolphin. Crossing Guard with Jack Nicholson. She now co-stars on the Sci-Fi Channel's most popular show, Sliders, and just released her first CD, Shiny. Please welcome Kari Wurr. I love Sliders. to contrast the energy with which you came out to Stephen Wright. I figured it wasn't a difficult act to follow. No, no, we have... Wait, I got what? the mic thing. <laughs> what was that? Yeah. I meant energy-wise. Energy-wise. We talked yeah. about this before. He knows I just can't stand him. Are you retiring? Excuse me? <laughs> I love him. Not really, I do. <laughs> I asked him if 
like if you he... just won in six years most awkward start to an interview. I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he had the whole, well, you know, he was really getting me excited backstage, and it's kind of we're in a big fight right now, aren't we? You have like eight personalities, don't you? Yes, I got it. Yeah, you hated him, you wanted him to retire, and he excited you backstage. No, all right. See, he's always saying that this is his last appearance, he's going to retire. It's like your I joke, was, right? Yeah, I was chitting with the he's makeup like the Michael woman. Michael Jordan of comedians. I was just chitting with the woman there. And I said, you've been on the show like 500 times. Do they have like a cake for you once a year or something? And I'm not funny, huh? <laughs> yes, you are. Thank you. <laughs> Conan is such a good... He's good at this. <laughs> I miss the typical traditional Conan talk show. I don't like late night talk shows. The only one that I actually watch is uh, Conan, and he doesn't even do it anymore. So I had to scream about you on the plane. Okay, okay you had a dream about me on the plane. Yeah, because I had to fly the red eye, and I was really dead tired. And I fell asleep, and I had this dream. I was a little nervous, because, you know... Is that what you do as you're going to sleep? <laughs> Your comedy sketches that you and Andy do. Uh huh. But anyway, I. Uh... Oh yeah, she's on something. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's one of those. Ooh, I'm all touchy feely drugs. Felix Night Owl, thanks for subscribing. Says Hannah, Hannah, Bobana, me, my, Momana, Hannah. Love you. Um, so I have a dream. Like she took ecstasy or something. It was so sincere. That was great. <laughs> I had this dream, okay, that I was I was really nervous about doing your show and everything. Gee, why? It seems to be going well. And I... <laughs> or someone gave her, like, Xanax and she's never taken it before or something. Is this Letterman or is this Dakota? Oh, I'm the little Letterman. Hi, y'all. How are you today? Evoking disdain and no, no, no we're just kidding. Already. All right, let's like, get back rich. in the beginning and like, nothing be happened yet. Okay. And okay. Hey, thank hey. you so much for having me. How are you? Good to see you. Okay. Yeah. So I was having this dream. Right? You're having a dream. That's was I in it? Yes. Oh, <laughs> it was a dream about us. Just let me finish really quick. And I dreamt that I gave you these Pez dispensers, and you said, "Why Pez dispensers?" And I said, "Well, because you kind of remind me of like a Pez." I said they should the make the candy or the dispenser. The dispenser, right? That makes sense. I have an yeah. old. No, it's folks. In fairness, I have a large head, and my body contains candy. So <laughs> it's only fair. Cameras remind me of the Brady Bunch, and I just kept staring at it as Alex Trebek was talking to me. And I kept hearing Marsha go to me. <laughs> That's a bizarre interview. <laughs> what would you like to say? I would like to talk about you a little bit. Oh. Oh. Give him the mic, what are you, his manager? <laughs> Can he maintain? Look, I know we live in a democracy, but this is not it. <laughs> this, this is, uh, you know, I'm Bush, basically, tonight, right? <laughs> huh? I am the decisioner. Thank you with a logical heckle. I wish we had more audience members like you. Really, you suck. Get off the stage. Give me the mic. All right, come on up. What's your name? What's your name? Matt Cody. Matt Cody. I wouldn't get into my last guy, name. You know, Whoa, Matt, 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 Matt. No, no, but, but it's, it's not fucking wrap off, all right? You're not Eminem and 8 Mile, all right? Relax. Relax. This, this might totally backfire on me. <laughs> At the very least, you and I can fuck each other at the end of the show. I don't know. <laughs> if it all goes horribly wrong, we have each other. <laughs> we can do algebra together in each other's arms. <laughs> He's really looking at me like he wants to hit me. Do you see that look? I know that look well, man. 
All right, all right, all right, Mr. Right. Cody. Go ahead, go ahead. This guy's making fun of me all night. You know, he's got a Costa Rica jacket on, you know. Nice to me. Give him hair. time, give him time. Got, got the long hair. I think this is a definition of a, a surfer with no coordination. Oh, no. You know, you can't, you can't even afford a surfer. Yeah. Oh, no. No. He's building the bit. <laughs> this is not the premise. It's extremely fucking long, but that's all right. Later on, we're going to land aircraft on it. It's so fucking long. It's getting so long, it's actually the exit strategy out of a rock. But that's all right. That's all right. I saw some other good comedians up here. You know, I think they got a good, you know, they got the job with a good Wait a minute, did you, abandon, did you abandon the other joke? Dude, we, we, we use words, we don't get physical. Don't make me give you a timeout. I think this is the best, like, dealing with a heckler bit I've ever seen. So I just want to be clear, though, for the record, you've abandoned the, the first joke. We've moved on out of the second joke. I think you're out of jokes. You called me up here to keep talking. So, you know. All right, okay. So the other comedians up here, obviously, he got the joke. the asshole weed tonight, didn't he? I don't want to give my stuff. You just keep talking. All right, I'm, I'm I, sorry. I, I, somebody's got to joke. Somebody's got to bring the funny, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Have you always wanted to be a comic? No. Well, that's <laughs> obvious. But that's all right. That's all right. Stick, stick with math, dude. Stick with math. All right, come on, bring it, bring it. I'll, I'll shut up. I'll shut up. I thought I really thought the other comedians were funnier. You know, they I think they got the job with a good audition. You got yours in the back alley in the doggy style position from that guy. Up. So that's three that you failed at, but that's all right. That's okay. It's starting to get a little mean, dude, and kind of slightly homoerotic, but whatever. Oh, are you going to get the <laughs> You know what? You actually failed your audition, and that means you have to go out in the back alley in the doggy style position. <laughs> I guess that's exactly what I just said. I just said the exact same joke. Yeah, but somehow I made it funny. funny. You just got to copy what I said. I just said the exact same way. Do you, you see that? I am the king, and these are my people. Job. How about how about this? How about you, you think this is easy? No, it's not. You think uh, I get paid very little, huh? Now you're getting heckled by other audience members. <laughs> that's not right. That's a that's a bad sign. How about this? Why don't you give me some math problems? No blackboard, no calculator. I don't even have my cell phone on me. Give me some math problems. your strong point. Go with your strong point, dude. Math problems. Give me, like, you know, help. I gotta figure out an integer or whatever the fuck that is or something. Give me, like, two plus two. Let's start basic, and I'll, I'll fuck that up. I'm just an audience member, man. I'm not. Uh, dude, you're on stage. You're an audience member. You're on, you're on. Yeah, you're on stage. Give me something like, if a train leaves Chicago... At 12 o'clock and you have to get to a gig, well, you won't be going there, but I will. <laughs> oh, the mic's out, the mic's out. Not even Lucifer can deliver that amount of burn. <laughs> Did they turn his mic? Dude, you're... <laughs> no, no, you, you gotta use your own instrument. You just pick it up and you plug it back in. It's not the fucking Matrix, alright? You're not going back into the machine universe. It's how we hear sound! It's funny that you can tell exactly around when this was made, based on the Matrix reference, the Iraq War reference. I mean, in fairness, that's still, like... <laughs> we're just leaving! But, like, you know, you get it? I don't know. Um... <clears throat> my math problem. So it's, it's okay. 750 a ticket. I see about 100 or 100 people here. 
Got 200. And about 12 comics. Got 12. It, you can't balance your checkbook. That's my, that's my, uh... Well, he's right about job. that. <laughs> I so cannot balance... Seven times 100 divided by 12. No. Do you know the Not answer? Enough. Wait, 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 what's the question? <laughs> I just heard a lot of numbers coming at me like, fuck, am I being audited? <laughs> what would you guys do? You'd whack them at this point, right? He wants to see the books. <laughs> Why don't you get the deposit on that lid? Look, I made fun of them, and even they fucking like me more than you. <laughs> this is one of the most unusual shows. I don't have my wallet on me. I'm gonna give you my email. We can continue this. We can we can go blogger to blogger. You can write stuff in capitals. Ooh. He's really pissed. What? Would you would you like to sit down now or? <laughs> I'm gonna buy you a slide ruler. That's some good shit. ASMR McDonald's ad, ew. Are you ready for corporate McDonald's ASMR? I am, I'm gonna put in my other headphone and I never do that. Ugh, whisper sweet nothings into my ear, Daddy Ronald. Weird. Oh, I already don't like it! Oh, God! About to tingle your ears, but also your taste buds. Today, we are going to hear the sound of something new at McDonald's Canada. Before we begin, make sure you're in a comfortable, seated position. A kitchen chair is ideal. Now, close your eyes and sit up tall. Okay, let's take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. In and out. Wonderful. Let's begin. Today, we are going to be exploring a new burger from McDonald's Canada. It's inspired by a classic, one might even say, iconic menu item. So, to have a little fun, we're going to hear sounds from both. Let's start with the classic burger. Listen closely to hear the sounds of two 100% Canadian all beef patties being perfectly grilled on the clamshell grill. Oh god, see, I worked at McDonald's for years in, like, high school and when I was first starting college, and that sound is not a pleasant sound for me. <laughs> oh, that sucks. That, this, this sucks. That's terrible. Princess Amelia says, Canada, are you okay? Muddy says, I can feel it in my spine. Oh god! McDonald's now has access to your spine. Fun fact. Uh, Daddy Sume with this link. And One Speedy Yoshi with a link. Japanese McDonald's commercial. Yeah, we watched this. We watched that before. <laughs> B best foods ultimate food bracket. Oh, God. Okay. Let's do this quickly. Quesadilla or crab? Quesadilla. Pizza or it looks like maybe Alfredo. Pizza. Ice cream or french fried? Wait, is that vanilla flavored ice cream or french fries? French fries. Tomato soup or raspberries? Tomato soup. Uh, this looks like another pizza or salmon. Pizza. Dumplings or paella? Paella? Pa I've never had either, but I'm gonna go dumplings. Creamed corn or spaghetti and meatballs? Spaghetti and meatballs. Rice or hummus? Rice. 
Mushroom pizza or grilled cheese? Grilled cheese. Chocolate ice cream or mint chocolate chip? Chocolate. Uh, chicken wontons or looks like maybe kidney beans? Wontons. Lay's classic or Doritos? Cheese flavor? Doritos. American cheese or blueberries, American cheese, ham and cheese or chicken tenders, ham and cheese, uh, green beans or bananas, bananas, sushi or cookies, cookies, other side, pancakes or waffles, pancakes, chicken nuggets or bozies, I don't even know what that is, so I'm gonna go chicken tenders, ham or strawberries, ham, broccoli or brownies, brownies, uh, penny pasta or popcorn? Pasta. Burgers or meatballs? Burgers. Vegetable soup or another pizza? A pizza. Uh, croissants or burritos? Burritos. Chicken quesadilla or gummy bears? Quesadilla. I can't tell what kind of soup that is, but I'm gonna go with it. Tacos or ramen? Tacos. This. Ooh. Buttered bread or donuts? That's actually tough. Because they're good for different reasons, but I'm going to go with buttered bread. Swiss cheese or looks like maybe chicken wings. Chicken wings. Uh, cake or a milkshake? Ooh, milkshake. What is that, mac and cheese or cold cuts? Mac and cheese. All right. <sighs> Quesadillas or pizza? Pizza. Fries or tomato soup? Fries, another pizza or dumplings, pizza, spaghetti and meatballs versus rice, spaghetti and meatballs, grilled cheese or chocolate ice cream, grilled cheese, chicken wontons or Doritos, Doritos, uh, American cheese versus a grilled ham and cheese, grilled ham and cheese, bananas or cookies, cookies, uh, cookies or grilled ham and cheese, grilled ham and cheese, uh, grilled cheese versus Doritos, grilled cheese, meatballs versus pizza, pizza, Pizza versus fries. Pizza. Pancakes versus chicken. Nuggets. Pancakes. Um, ham versus brownies. Ham. Pasta versus burgers. Pasta. Pizza versus burritos. Pizza. Quesadilla versus whatever this is. Chicken quesadilla. Uh, tacos. Bread. Mac and cheese. We're getting closer. We're getting so much closer. I promise. We're almost done. Cheese pizza over pepperoni. Grilled ham and cheese over just normal ham and cheese. Um, pizza versus ham and cheese. Ooh, I gotta go grilled ham and cheese. Um, Oliver Klozoff, thank you for raiding. Welcome, raiders. Go check out Oliver here on Twitch. Pancakes or ham? Ham. Pasta or this pizza? Pasta. Quesadilla or tacos? I'm gonna go quesadilla. I like quesadillas. Mac and cheese wins that one. Mac and cheese wins this one. Ham versus pasta. Ham? Ham versus mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. So ultimately it comes down between a ham and cheese melt or macaroni and cheese. I should have predicted this. Um, I'm going to say ham and cheese. The ham and cheese melt wins. <laughs> There's your answer, I guess. If you had a question. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hi. Check this out. And then if you're, what is it? You said you were going to switch on the doctor who got cheating on the test. But you didn't cheat on his test. Dude, you said you weren't going to switch Don't on me, man. Don't touch me. It's your problem. I need that credit, dude. But you cheated. Dude, I, I need the credit, man. Why don't you switch on That's it. Me? I've had enough of you. You better back up. Are you serious? <laughs> serious? You think the force is strong with you, old dumb one? What? Come on, man. Oh, no. Come on, man. Back off! Just back off already! Come on, what's up, man? What's up? What's up? Oh! Oh! Get out of here! Get you and your little you know what? posse and get out of here! Go! You know what? You're lucky this time. You're lucky See, this I'm tired time, of this! You jerk! You're you won't be just so lucky let's go! This time. 
Nerds need to unite. I'm tired of them coming in here and trying to bully me and my friends. We need to take a stand for ourselves. Stand up, nerds. What did you do? Don't touch me. I don't believe this. Bullies. That's not really funny. <laughs> Look, if you're gonna interrupt the education I'm paying for at a college, which is very expensive, your joke better be the funniest fucking thing ever. Like, that's not funny. Like, come on. I'm trying to learn shit. Look, <laughs> I'm trying to get a degree. Speedy Yoshi says, I just want to get my GED and you and your boyfriend can role play outside the classroom. You know. Virgin versus 10 girls. 35 year old virgin speed dates 10 our... girls? Okay. Our... Why is the fact that he hasn't had sex relevant? Who cares? Our friend Miguel, the guy with the horrible rejection story. And then, and then she. Oh, is this like a dating coach guy? She dropped it. She goes, You have got to be the ugliest guy in the. No, dude, you. I... He sees it, he's. Right here. Her name is uh, Sasha Banks, and uh, she's just so cool, man. So who better to help him out than <laughs> the virgin converter himself? I did it two years ago with a 21-year-old. I'm gonna do it again with this 35-year-old, but this time we need to see where he's at. So we brought seven girls to speed date our friend Miguel. Let's hop into this. Hi, Hi. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. My name's Eva, what's your name? Miguel. Miguel. Miguel, very nice to meet you. Uh, I have to do this because my mom said it was essential. I have to have gum, so my breath smells like kind of nice. Oh no. Okay. So. Are you close with your mom? I'm very close with my mom. She's. Why are you pulling out your Nintendo Switch? You're on a date. Kind of like my best friend right now. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, she's always been. So family is very important to you? Uh, yeah, just my mom right now. My dad's not really in the picture, but okay. yeah, me and my mom are really, really close. So I actually enjoy someone who's close to their family. Speedy Yoshi says this has to be satire. I don't know. It might be. And who isn't shy or embarrassed about saying that they spend a lot of time with their mom and that their mom might be their best friend. Would you like a piece of gum? Yes, please, actually. Uh, I'll let you pick <laughs> Mike says sometimes I'm glad to choose to be single. <laughs> hey, do you, man. Whatever okay, makes you happy. Much. So are you working right now? I, uh, I am not working right now, uh, but I do um, I do like a lot of like streaming video games. Do you, okay. do you watch video, do you like video games? I play some video games I haven't oh, in a while. Content. No, that's okay. Uh, very nervous. I don't, know if you can I don't understand why he pulled out his Nintendo Switch in the first place. Like there's nothing wrong with it. Like Baja and I currently are playing uh, uh, Stardew Valley together. Like video games, great. If he's interested in video games, that's absolutely something to bring up, you know? It's cool to have common interests. Um, and even if you don't, it's good to understand the interests of someone you're interested in. But like, I don't need to see that you brought a Nintendo Switch to the day. I don't know. Everything is satire now. Prove me wrong. <laughs> it's hard to tell. It's so hard. No. You look a little nervous, but that's okay. Yeah. We all get nervous sometimes. Yeah. I'm not usually, you know, in these types of situations either, so it's normal to get a little nervous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but do you, do you like video games? Um, I used to play a lot more, but yeah. lately I haven't played, but I do watch Naruto. Okay. So I watch some anime, but I haven't played too many video games lately. I love anime. Yeah, what's your favorite anime? Dragon Ball Z. She was into video games and anime, so yeah. I can see myself being with somebody who has the same interest uh, that I do, so that I have. What did you think would stop you from dating this guy? What's the one thing you did not like? I kind of like when a man can take charge and he can lead the conversation and like look me in the eye and I feel like he was kind of nervous looking in his bag, looking down. So kind of to make that connection. I say this all the time, men have to keep I'm so sorry. Miguel. Miguel, Miguel. Maria. Yeah. Maybe Miguel is just a bottom, okay? I'm so sorry, I'm just- It's he's the, he's the sub in the relationship. What are you just, playing? Uh, Civilization 6, have you ever played that before? He's, wait, he's playing a game on the date? No, what is that? 
it's just it's a game where you're just like have to conquer other countries and you have to develop oh. a society and it's, it's a really interesting game right now why is he my name is miguel what is your nice name nice to meet you my name's ashley ashley wow you oh i like her like i i is it a dress i guess i didn't see but it's like really cute i like that you have a really pretty name and you're really pretty too thank you <laughs> do you like video games i love video games you don't play video games? Oh yeah, that's an adorable dress. Not a lot, no. There's this character in my game that I'm playing right now, Civilization. Okay. That... I don't know. I, I'm, like, I'm not gonna say I'm the most socially adept person in the world either, but like... I can't watch the rest of that. That's hurting me physically. Um... <laughs> how do I put this? Oh yeah, I'm, the guy probably has has anxiety and stuff. Like, let's say I was I was going out with someone. Let's say Baha and I uh, weren't together. Uh, God forbid. Um, and I was on a, a, a first date with someone, and I was like, let's say it did come up. I don't think I would outright. I don't think I've ever said on a like a date or anything. Do you like video games? But let's say that came up. Let's say I was like, oh yeah, you know, I, I don't know, what are your interests? Oh, I, what, I'm really into movies, I, I stream for a living, um, I, I, I'm into conspiracy theories, but not, like, I believe them, I just find them interesting, and the people who believe them, and I like video games. Do you play video games? And let's say she's like, no, I, I don't really play video games, I don't think I ever really have. I'd be like, oh, okay, and I'd move on. I wouldn't then opine about a video game I'm playing because she has already signaled that she is not interested <laughs> in that particular topic. I That's not to say if you were in a relationship with someone without that interest, you could never talk about it, but the point is like you're on a first date. You're 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 trying to get to know each other. Why are you talking about something that you can't both kind of engage with? No dates for Hannah. I gotta go on dates with you, Baha. We gotta go back to that sushi restaurant. Daddy Sume says, I have mad anxiety and a legit disorder, but even I'm not that weird, that awkward. <laughs> hey everybody, it's summer. But it's summertime. Summer vacation is here Gonna run my bike Gonna go somewhere It's my favorite time of year It's summertime And isn't it great It's summertime When everything's great What food won? The ham and cheese melt RTK142 says, I have zero clue how to meet women, plus I'm closeted and pre-transition, pre so I consider it ethically wrong to date a straight woman knowing eventually I'll come out. That's tough. I'm really, really sorry. Um, I, I hope you get to the place where you want to be, where you feel comfortable coming out, because I know that can be really, really difficult. See all the birds in the sky. Time to hit the pool, watch the people pass by. It's my favorite time of year. It's summertime, and isn't it great? It's summertime when everything's great. Cause I'm free to be just what I want to be. Cause I'm free to be just what I want to be in the summertime. Everything is just so fine. It's summertime and isn't it great? It's summertime when everything's great. Summertime, great time. Why did they make this? I don't understand. You got your friend a $31 cameo from Sheriff Joe Arpaio for his birthday. <laughs> oh no. 
Okay, Harry, I hear you have a happy birthday stock coming. Images. According to the boys at uh, 1312, uh, you want me to sing happy birthday and give you a little uh, cop advice? First of all, I just had a birthday. I didn't even sing in my birthday, which was June 14, Flag Day. But anyway, happy birthday, Harry, blah, blah, blah. Now, I hear that uh, you always looked up to me, supported me. Thank you for that. Also, you're a big game hunter. You want to know what I think? Well, you know, I'm not a big meat guy. Um, in fact, I put all my inmates, 8,000, on a vegetarian diet. Not that I'm against people eating meat, but, you know, be careful. You know, take care of the, I'm big on animal abuse. Anybody that, uh, you know, does anything against animals, I, I used to go after them. But there's nothing wrong with hunting. And there's nothing wrong with people eating meat if that's what they like. So also, uh, you mentioned something about, um, uh, I'm trying to think what you said, you know, I'm getting up there in the age, but I still have a pretty good memory. Uh, oh, I, I know you want to be a sheriff and you want to fight the bad guys, Antifa and so on. That's, that's commendable. <laughs> and also you want to be a priest. Well, that's a, great profession also. I am Catholic. My wife just passed away, big time uh, Catholic. Uh, but it looks like you're a great guy. You got some good ideas. You got people behind you, supporting you. And uh, I wish you many more birthdays to come. Keep in touch. Thanks. That guy's a huge piece of shit. Okay, let's do another couple and then I'll call it a night because I would like to go exercise so I can go and play Stardew with my love. Religious mom finds out her son is a furry. Oh no, it's, it's subtitled. Rastest hier so aus wegen dem Flüchtier? Hast du Jakob organisiert, dass er nicht irgendwie wegschafft hier? Du rastest hier aus wegen so einem Flüchtier. Du nimmst Flüchtier. diese Tasche nicht mit. Du kannst ein Flüchtier mit dir ins Auto nehmen, aber nicht ins Tropical Island. Haben wir uns jetzt richtig verstanden? Du hast doch bereits alles gesagt. Du kannst doch jetzt. Los, gehen. bitte. Nee, ich geh jetzt nicht. Du hast mir ein Angebot gemacht und dann darfst du jetzt gehen. Du gehst jetzt bitte ins Auto. He's taking a plushie around with him or something. Das morgen immer noch Zeit. Und Dienstag und Mittwoch und Donnerstag. Ich will nicht, dass du mich so behandelst. Weiß ich. Und ich möchte nicht, dass du mich so behandelst. Mit so einem Schweinescheiß hier. Mit so einem Schweinescheiß hier innen drin. Was machst du denn, David? Warum machst du das? Warum? Oh. He has like some sort of plushie that he put a flashlight into and he has. He masturbates with the, the plush. Oh no. Warum? Schätzt du da deinen Schniegel rein? Sag's mir doch! Warum machst du das denn? Mensch, da unten sind deine Geschwister! Gott liebt dich über alles, aber das geht so nicht! Das geht so nicht! I don't understand why she even knows about it. Like, if he has a weird sex toy thing that he sticks in a plushie, which I think is weird, but like, I don't care what other people do as long as they're not hurting anyone. Why does she know about it? What? Du provozierst uns bis an die Oberkante. Warum machst du das? Warum? Guck ja nicht, Mama. Guck ja nicht. Du hast mir eben noch erklärt, dass du da nicht hinguckst. Ja, pff, du, du hast hier rumgebastelt. Du hast alles liegen gelassen. Muddy says, I'm on his side, it's just a plushy. Oh no. <laughs> du suchst doch nur sowas. Ich suche gar nicht sowas. Ich frage nach Antworten und ich kriege hier keine. 
Also du suchst du mein Zimmer? Ich suche hier überhaupt nichts. Ja, du musst ja. Ich suche hier nichts, David. Musst du ja. Und es muss dir doch nicht peinlich sein, das ist doch dein Leben. Ist mir auch nicht peinlich. Kommst du jetzt bitte? Du weißt, was du hier gerade abziehst, oder? Ja. Du beleidigst hier so ziemlich alles, was mir irgendwie was bedeutet und dann verlangst du noch, dass ich mitkomme. Das bedeutet dir was? Ja. Es bedeutet dir was, dich da reinzustecken und onanieren in ein Tier? Ja. Das ist die absolute Sünde. Und das weißt du auch. In deinem Herzen weißt du das. <lacht> It's so over the top for her to be like, it's a sin. Listen, lady. <laughs> no. <laughs> it doesn't mean he necessarily wants to fuck real animals. I assume he doesn't. Princess Amelia says, this is art. <laughs> Kommst du jetzt bitte? Nach dem, was du hier abziehst. Versau uns nicht allen diesen Tag. Ich komme mit, wenn ich die Tasche mitnehmen darf. Ja, mit ins Auto, aber nicht ins Tropical Island. Warum darf ich das nicht? Darum nicht. Aber ich habe echt keine Lust, nach dem, was du hier abziehst, jetzt noch mitzukommen. Wirklich nicht. Musst du aber. Ich, ich will jetzt nicht mitkommen. Gut, morgen kannst du ausziehen, aber heute nicht. Komm bitte. Du schmeißt ja alles in meinem Zimmer durch die Gegend und jetzt verlangst du noch, dass ich mitkomme? Ja. Auf dem Familienausflug ja. und da den normalen Sohn spiele? Ja. Bitte lass mich doch einfach hier und geh oben. Nein, mach ich nicht. Ich habe es, hab es organisiert. Ich habe organisiert, dass Willis herkommt. Die kommt hier nicht in die Wohnung, wenn du hier ordinierst mit unserem Tier. Das mache ich nicht. Und es ist unverschämt. Ich habe hier echt Leute bemüht. Ich freue mich total, dass Papa mitkommt und jetzt machst du hier so einen Affen. Bitte lass mich doch einfach hier. Nein! Ich kann es nicht! Ich merke diese Stimmung hier! Die Stimmung vom letzten Mal, Tropika Island! Ich kann es nicht, David! Und ich kann nicht nach dem, was du jetzt gerade gemacht hast, hier noch mitkommen. Und da völlig den normalen Sohn spielst. Du spielst ich... keinen normalen Sohn! Du sitzt einfach nur da und gehst mit den anderen rutschen! Lass mich doch einfach hier. Nein, lass ich nicht! Du schämst dich nicht mal dafür! Du schämst dich für gar nichts. Du bist der nächste Mal los. Du bist hier richtig. Ich habe dich gestern schon darum gebeten. Ich habe dich nur darum gebeten. Ich habe dir das Halsband besorgt. Ich hole dich ab. Ich mache und tue. Ich rufe dich. Jesus Christ, this is fucked. Like, what he's doing is atypical, obviously. And I think it's a little unhealthy that he seems to want to take this plushie wherever he goes. That doesn't seem healthy. It seems like he's, like, treating it like a relationship with this thing, when really it's just, like, a sex toy he's using. But the mom's also really fucked up. I... I'm gonna... I'm just gonna pretend I never saw that and never think about it again. All right, let's find one more video and then we will call it an evening. It's 48 minutes long. Holy a mark right there. Oh, Seen some 
billboards, some articles that being a vegan can help your sex drive. Can you confirm or deny that you are an absolute stallion beneath the sheets? I went viral for trolling some vegan protesters. Well, today they are back. So now I am news reporter Gary Giggles. Let's get the scoop. Uh, Gary Giggles, I'm with the Dallas Dudes Gazette. I find this guy pretty cringe. That right here, it's a little janky microphone. We don't have a big budget. It's Dallas Dudes Gazette and Gary Giggles. Um, it would be cool if like, it, it, we can eat animals that are assholes. Like cats, no problem with. Being a vegan can help your sex drive. Can you confirm or deny that you are an absolute stallion beneath the sheets? It's being vegan can help your sex drive. Can you confirm or deny? Ooh, he's hesitating. I, I think he just doesn't want to say it. You humble, you're a humble guy. Yeah. Okay, humble guy right there. Perfect. I uh, can neither confirm nor deny this. <laughs> do you do CrossFit ever? Uh, no. Personally, Okay, I'm thank God. You never stop talking about your lifestyle. Pamela Anderson, she's a vegan. Yeah. Pretty hot, right? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so, too. Uh, I don't know her. Don't you don't know? Oh, my gosh. Some of the NFL mascots use animals, like uh, the Denver Broncos. They just signed quarterback Joe Flacco. Do you think Joe Flacco is an elite quarterback? That's kind of the age-old question. I already follow football myself, but... Ah, uh, bummer. That could have ended a lot of serious debates. You know your group was featured on... You know what energy this guy has? He has John Doyle energy. I think that's part of the reason I don't like him. <laughs> Total frat move about a month ago. What is that? Some douchebag like had like a tacos or dope sign. I didn't know if you knew about it. I yeah, this is the page of Total Frat Move. Two top comments. I care to get your response. Look at the arm size difference. Shout out meat. Care to respond to that? Does this motivate you to go to the gym more? Not very much. <laughs> you don't exercise, so you should yeah. get the guns, more protein. <laughs> but I guess like you're pretty skinny because I've been fat before and eating only plants, you know, probably helps with that. Animals think animals are food. How would you respond to that? Dung beetles think crap is food. It's kind of that is true. So does my dog. Very nice to meet you. Gary Giggles with the Dallas Morning Gazette. Gary Giggles. Very nice to meet you, Dallas Dudes Morning Gazette. For the record, could we show him a picture of Pamela Anderson? I forgot my poster with Pamela Anderson. <laughs> you should seriously Google her. She's the hottest vegan on earth. Okay. This dude never, never realized that I was this guy interviewing him. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. RTK says, oh, I like Flacco. He had skill, but he really isn't elite. I don't know anything about anything about that. Seen some billboards, some articles. All right, let's see who we're going to raid. I even hate. Thanks to uh, Growlithe likes to lay down right next to my rolling chair. Whenever I adjust, it causes issues and it freaks her out. All right, have a good night, everyone. Uh, I have electrolysis tomorrow, so there'll be no stream, but I'll be back Saturday for a stream. So I'll see you guys then. Have a good night.